All right, man. I'm just going to jump right into it. T tonight is going to be a little bit different. We've got a series of new subscribers who maybe were here for the guns. We're not talking guns tonight. I'm sorry, I'm trying to get the light right. That's as close as we're going to get. Uh, tonight I am spun up. Uh, tonight we are talking about uh, some, some religious stuff. Uh, I am a man of faith and it, it uh, informs everything I do. If you don't like religious stuff, you better bail now because I'm about to go hard, fast, and heavy. Uh, if, if you're one of these milk toast, mealy mouthed, manby pamby, lace panty waist, dirty sons of bitches that have destroyed everything precious and good in this nation, you, you, you probably want to get out now too because I'm probably going to make your head explode. At least I hope I'm going to make your head explode. If I could use my brain to explode your head, I would. I would, I would focus my rays, my death ray, into your head, and I would, I would blow your brains just all over whatever room you're in because I hate you so much. Yes, I said that. I hate you. Uh, but specifically, who I really hate tonight <laughs> is some, some, I don't have words. Uh, usually when I do these live streams, it's late at night like it is right now. Kids are sleeping. I'm trying to be quiet. Uh, forget it. I'm waking all the kids up tonight. This is a weakling. This is a liar. This is a deceiver. This, this is a, an intentional infiltrator who, who is trying to, to, to worm his way into somewhere he doesn't belong because he hates it and he wants to destroy it. His name is David Wilbur, uh, and I hate him. I may repent of that later. I don't know. God hates. Uh, God hates evil. Uh, God hates a lot of things. He has a whole list of things he hates, seven things he hates and something he despises. This guy might be nine of those eight things. Uh, a dirty, dirty, lying. We, <laughs> some, some people bailed. We were up to 11 and, 11 and people went down to seven. That's good. If, if you can't handle it, get out now. Let's talk about David Wilbur. Okay, so, so many of you know, those of you who've been around for a while know that, that, that I follow a, 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 a subset of Christianity. Known, we refer to it as Torah keeping. Uh, if you follow my channel, you probably are familiar with, with Bear and Dependent or Pastor Fox. They're both Torah keepers too. Uh, we believe in Yeshua or Jesus. Uh, I tend to stay away from the, the Hebrew names a little bit, uh, but, but it's, some of us use them. Uh, we believe in Jesus. We believe in the New Testament, but we believe that was a continuation of the Old Testament, uh, that, that some things changed around Jesus, and, and there's some schisms and some, some differences in, in, in the group. Uh, some of us believe... But generally, all of us believe that the Old Testament laws are generally intact except for the sacrifices and the priesthood. Uh, and when some of us call ourselves, I like the term Torah keeper. I think Pastor Fox just describes it as following the way. Uh, uh, sometimes you hear people talk about Messianics who are a slightly different subset, but they're, they're cousins. Uh, they'll talk about Hebrew roots. Uh, and, and one of... Seven things God detests. Thank you, Mark. Uh, one, of, one of the things you find in, among Torah keepers, especially, maybe not so much the Messianics, uh, is men. Men. Manly men. Men who left the, the mainstream church because it was weak, because it was watered down, uh, because it was feminized, and we, we, couldn't, we couldn't deal with it anymore. Uh, James is just a believer. Uh, that's probably what we would all, what I'll say. But, uh, and so... And, and so there's this whole subset of, of men who, who got out of the feminized corporate church and we started doing what we believed God had called us to do. Be separate, live a certain way. Uh, and now on comes this, this Wilbur. Wilbur is, he sounds like a Wilbur. Hey, Isaac. Uh, and he, he, the only reason he has come to my attention because he's attacked one of my friends. And, and I realize that I'm in danger here of, of responding to an insult. Hey, Biddy, we haven't seen you in forever. How are you, ma'am? Uh, because he's attacked my friend. Uh, but, but in the course of attacking my friend, he brought himself to my attention. And I'm not even going to deal with his attack on my friend. I'm not even going to touch it. Guy named Pete, good man, tall, strong, four sons, veteran. This guy is an archetype of which we're seeing in, in the Torah observant community. Uh, manly man who is just sick of the games and sick of the weakness and sick of the losing and the failure. And uh, uh, we're doing well. Mariah, did you want to say hi to Biddy? I don't know where. Oh, Biddy just hey. said hi. <laughs> uh, he's the epitome of this. And this dirty, pasty-faced weakling who, 
Now, you want to know when you not trust a man. There's all sorts of ways you can know when not to trust a man. Uh, this guy, he, he has this purposefully soft voice. He talks like this. <laughs> and he draws out the last syllable of everything he says. It's, it's this far from being an affected gay slur. When he speaks, it's, 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 it's like gay, glitter, what, glitter, is it called glitter face? It's like black face, but the gay, he talks glitter face. Don't ask me how I know that, I don't know. I may have just made that up, but I bet you it's a thing, glitter face. This, this Wilbur talks glitter face. Well, I just think that Mr. Rambo is mean. I hate that. When I hear men talk like that, they're not men. If you talk like that, you're not a man because you're scared of your own voice. This is a man's voice. Maybe I'm putting on airs here. Maybe I'm just affecting a man's voice. Maybe I'm doing, what would a man pretend, <coughs> be, pretend to be a man? Uh, pretend to be gay is glitter face. Pretend to be a man would be, oh, hairy face. <laughs> Maybe I'm putting on hairy face. Uh, but talk like a man, damn it. This is one of the things my father, <laughs> one of the things my father, I wouldn't say beat into me, but he drove into me as a, talk like a man, talk to me like a man, don't whine. This Wilbur's entire, every, every word that comes out of his mouth is a whine. It's a scared whine. It's like, oh, don't hit me. Uh, I hate it. Okay, so here's his big thing, and we may, we may wade into Scripture, we may not, I don't know. Uh, uh, he's all about this mutual submission. Okay, first off, not only is he about mutual submission, but he's not like, I'm not a liberal. I'm not a liberal. He says, I'm not a liberal. <laughs> yes, you are a liberal, but you're the worst kind of a liberal. You're a lying liberal. You're a dirty, rotten, lying, weakling, infiltrating destroyer, and I hate you. Oh, my God, you're trying to do to us what was done to, to America, uh, the American church, but America. We went from a nation of men to a nation of these whiny, glitter-faced soy boys, noodle-armed, weakling soy boys, who are so intimidated by the few men that are left, like my buddy Pete, they're so intimidated by the few men that are left that they have to destroy the entire institution of manhood just so that they don't have to feel intimidation in the presence of other men. That's who this Wilbur is. That's what's so disgusting about him. He, this is that, that dirty, dirty, rotten, weaselly little son of a bitch you knew in high school. It's like, I'm a feminist. No, you're not a feminist. You're a dirty, weaselly son of a bitch that can't compete with other men. And so you try to find a way to, to hamstring other men. You just come up behind them and try to take their feet right out from underneath them so that, that you can try to slide in there and, and act like, for, first off, I'm not going to play your game. I don't have to try to be a man, but I'm going to take you out from behind so I can have access to your women. I don't know what this guy wants with women. He wouldn't know what to do with a woman if he had one. Watch, he's probably got some wife who henpecks his ass. I am really, really, really hoping he watches this. I am really hoping... This, this, this pathetic little mini-man watches this video, and I can look him in his eyes, I'm looking in your beady little eyes, Wilbur, and tell him, shut up. Leave your betters alone, boy. I hate, I hate sounding like that, like I'm some kind of you know, football jock beating up on the nerd or something. I, I was the nerd in high school. But I, no one beat up on me, though. All right. That's really good tea. Okay, here's, here's what, okay, so obviously I really dislike this guy and I'm really mad at him, but here's what makes it worse. Here's what makes, this is, this is what makes it worse. This, this pathetic, uh, dirty, backstabbing, insidious little weakling is, thank you, Isaac, you were correct. The masculine man is godly because masculinity is the reflection of God's main attributes. Uh, anywho. Uh, where was I? Oh, not only is he trying to tear down other men in, in our community so that he can pretend like... That's why this guy's a, be a believer. That, this is why this guy's a Christian, by the way. Because he thinks Christians are supposed to be nice guys. And so he can hide his weak ass in, in, in this veneer of... Uh, please look at Psalms 15. Okay, Mark. We all have a lot of respect for Mark. We'll take a little detour. Psalms 15. It would be easier to find. Sorry, my lighting is terrible. Uh, that's a short one. I'll just read the whole thing. Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? 
He that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. He that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doeth... I'm not sure... Uh, I'm, I might be straying a little close to backbiting, Mark. I think you're talking about what Wilbur did to Pete, but I, I, if, if you are, are just gently reminding me of something, I will keep it in mind as we go forward. I'd like to think I'm not backbiting just because I'm doing it to his face. Uh, he might be responding to a question in the chat. He might be, yeah. Oh, oh, this might be the... He that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor, in whose eyes a vile person is contemned, but he, but he honoreth them that fear the Lord. He that sweareth to his own hurt, and changeth not. He that putteth not out his mouth to usury, nor taketh reward against the innocent. He that doeth these things shall never be moved. Okay, that's an excellent verse, uh, passage. Uh, in the process of trying to make himself not feel like a, a dirty weakling in front of better men, he is going to try to destroy the, 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 I'm going to be a little grandiose here. Hey, Aiden here. I'm good at grandiose, grandiosity. I'm a little melodramatic. Here I go. I'm going to be melodramatic. He is taking aim at the remnant in, in this country. The, the mainstream church is corrupted. I, even our Baptist friends, who I used to have a fair amount of respect for, for their hardline stance, they, they are starting to compromise. I seriously compromise. Assemblies of God is compromising. Methodists, Methodists haven't been Christians in years. Uh, Presbyterian, there's a, one little branch of Presbyterianism that, that's held on, but for the most part, Presbyterians, Anglicans, the Catholics with this new Pope of theirs, none of them are even pretending to hold on to the revolting woman. Yay! <laughs> uh, uh, none of them are even pretending to hold on to the clear standards of Scripture. They're all abandoning it. Not of some of them to lesser or greater extents. There's one group, there is one group that's forming up to hold the line. One group is forming up to hold the line and say, this far, no farther. And that is the Torah observant Hebrew root slash sometimes messianic. It's a little, it gets a little weird during the messianics. This is the one group that is holding the line, that is, that is going to stand firm. And this, this dirty, weaselly, uh, backstabber, saboteur is, is going to try to wheedle his way in there and do the best he can to rot it from the inside. Uh, his big thing is mutual submission, which is a, you, if you watched many of my videos, hey Wes, uh, <laughs> uh, where was I, Wes just made me lose my, if you watch many of my videos, you've heard me lose my shit about the mutual submission thing, I despise mutual submission, I despise mutual submission, it is a lie from the pits of hell, it is a, a, oh, I just, I'll go off, uh, Ooh, I kind of want to dig into this, and I kind of don't want to lose anybody. I've never had 52 people on a live stream before, I don't think. Uh, but we'll do it. So if you're, you, most of you have heard of mutual submission. It's in Ephesians 5. I lost all my references because I was so mad. Uh, I was following. This guy has an hour and a half long video with this other. Oh, my God, this other guy's even worse than his. He, this other guy's a little more honest, though. This guy kind of admits that, yeah, I, I, I know I'm a thwith. Uh, his name was uh, J.K. McKee, I think. Uh, uh, and, and he was kind of honest about being, yes, Christ, <laughs> this is what's wrong with mutual submission. So in Ephesians 5, where was I at? Starting in, uh, uh, we're going to do verse 22. And I'm not trying to just cut out his cherry pick and cut out their arguments. Vegas, Vegas. Hey, buddy. Uh, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Okay, so this is this is one of the big verses, guys like me. You know, I, I I'm a I'm a uh, a Christian patriarchal anarchist, by the way. I finally have a a, a label for myself. And we base large swaths of our lives off of that passage. Uh, we say, you know, the church is submitted to Christ just as the wife is submitted to the husband. It's a hard teaching. Many people don't like it. Uh, but, but we believe that marriage is a very, very powerful and sacred example of how we're all supposed to treat God. And the way a woman treats her husband is, is a, a direct challenge to him to submit correctly to God. And it's a direct example to her children how they're supposed to submit to God. And how, how a husband treats his wife is, is a, a, uh, a sacred duty to reflect 
as accurately as possible God's character to his wife and children. Uh, and, and that's why marriage is so sacred and so important, uh, more so than almost any other institution in, in our faith. So when, these, when these, these idiot saboteurs come up with their mutual submission, and they're always these, these pasty-faced, noodle-armed, sweet-talking, like this Wilbur piece of trash, uh, and they won't talk about mutual submission. And, and on one hand, <laughs> and if you wasted your time watching this guy's videos, and please don't, please don't go watch this Wilbur's lunacy, the, the, the sheer drivel that proceeds forth from his mouth is, is, is a waste of time. I do not want to reward him. Uh, I'm just angry, and I'm lashing out. <laughs> Soy boys, yes, Isaac. Uh, and what they're saying with their mutual submission, they're saying, oh, you got to be nice. So, so no one's in charge. Husbands and wives got to get together, and they got to work it out, and they got to come to a decision, and then we all got, why can't, why can't we all just be happy? Let's all be happy. <laughs> the problem is that we serve a righteous and holy God, a, a just God. Let me, let me remind you who our God is. Uh, I'm going to lose you guys. I'm, I'm sorry. Maybe I won't. You know what? Who cares if I do? You know what? You got better things, to, other things to do. You don't have to listen to all this. Most of you know all this anyway. But many of you have heard my favorite passage of Scripture. It is Revelation, I believe it's 16. <coughs> oh, my best, not it. It'll take me too long to find it. Maybe it's 19. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it's 19. Revelation chapter 19. Come with me if you please. This is our God. This is who we worship. We're going to start in... Excuse me, I'll get my redneck... Uh... Okay. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. In righteousness he doth judge and make war. He doth judge and make war. That's not being very nice, Mr. Wilbur. Are you, sir, you're worshiping the right guy? His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. This is the guy that, that the husband is like. This is Christ. This is when Christ returns. You as a husband, this is who you're called to, to reflect to your wife. You're not supposed to be a nice guy, Mr. Wilbur. Uh, and, he, uh, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. So you sacred namers, I'll shut the hell up. You don't know what you're talking about. Uh... And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies, were, he, was, the armies he was in front of an army in a vesture dipped in blood. This is not a nice guy. This is not a guy who consults his wife before he goes to make war and judge. Because that's what he's doing, is making war and judging. Uh, and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. He's got a sword. Holy hell, Hannah. That with it he should smite, he should smite. Not a nice guy, Mr. Wilbur. You're not a Mr. Miss Wilbur. Uh, where was I? He should smite the nations and he shall rule with a rod of iron. This is Christ. This is Jesus. This is who you as a husband are, are compared to. Uh, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. The fierceness and wrath of Almighty God, Miss Wilbur. And he hath on his vestiture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Now, let's go back to Ephesians. This is Jesus, this is the, this is Jesus returning in a salt knife. <laughs> I, I, you could convince me that Jesus is going to have an AR-15 when he comes back. Uh, this is Jesus coming back. Let's, let's go back to Ephesians 5 real quick. I, don't, I can't believe I'm finding this stuff as fast as I am. I, norm, I don't normally do this well. Uh, uh, wives, submit yourselves unto the husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as the Christ is the head of the church. Now, now we just saw Christ coming back, dr drenched in blood, waving a sword around, smiting, judging, ruling the nations. That's who you're supposed to be as a husband. That's who you are to the church. That guy. 
Okay, so when you, when you say, oh, you know, mutual submission, what you're saying is that the, the Bible lies. Because when Revelation chapter 19 tells us that he, he comes in fierceness and wrath and rules with a rod of iron, uh, you're, when you say mutual you know, mutual submission, you're saying, no, no, that's a lie, that's a lie, that's a lie. We, we want the guy with the sheep and the babies. Sheep and the babies, sheep and the babies. You start sounding like, uh, what was that stupid movie? Uh, was it Talladega? Ricky Bobby, Talladega Nights. Ah, oh, I like baby Jesus. That's who, that's who this Wilbur chick is. This Wilbur chick is Ricky Bobby in Talladega Nights. Oh, baby Jesus, you know, thank you for you know, my hot wife. I mean, that is a lie. That is a destructive lie. That is the lie that led to, I'm going to make you mad, Biddy. Biddy, you know how much I love you, right? Nothing I'm about to say applies to Biddy. Biddy's a hell of a woman. That Rick is a blessed man, even if he doesn't believe in blessings. Has he come to Jesus? Yeah, it's none of my business. Uh, that, that's the kind of thinking that leads to women voting. <gasps> well, what happens when women get to vote? Well, suddenly we get the bloodiest century in the history of mankind. We get war upon war upon war. We get atheism. We get feminism. We get abortion. We get gay marriage. We get three-year-olds being started on a path to to transgenderism, i.e. castration and, and sexual objectification for the rest of their lives. The, the, the horse shit. Yes, he has. Or yes, he's blessed. Which one? You got you to gotta let me know there. We wind up in 2021. You're right, Wes. I'm so sorry. Mrs. Wes S. is another fine woman. She's been in my home. I, I enjoyed her to no end. Uh, good, good, solid woman. There's some women who should vote. And then there's about 95% of them that need to be pregnant and at home. All right? Now, women like, like Biddy and, 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 and Mrs. West S. should also be pregnant, making righteous children like themselves because we need more of them. But we could let that 5% vote if we could figure out a way to weed out the other 95 idiots. Uh, uh, well, we're still praying, Biddy. He'll come around eventually. Uh, but, but this, this Wilbur chick, and you know, maybe with what this is all about, maybe she just wants to be able to vote. I don't know. Davide, Div, how, how would you say? Davidina? Davidina? Yeah, we get Hillary Clinton. We get Jill, Clinton, or Jill Biden, the, the real president. Uh, anyway. so, so that's what this moron is, is advocating for when he advocates for mutual submission. Many of us, many of us when we hear mutual submission, we hear... Oh, yeah, let's be nice. Yeah, I'd be nice. You know what? I struggle with wanting to be nice. Uh, I'm too old for that stuff. <laughs> uh, so is Sarah. Uh, I want to be nice. I want to be, I like people. I'm a people pleaser. I am. I like it. BDSM. I don't even know what's going on there, Chuck. Uh, I want my wife to like me. I want my children to like me. I am fundamentally incapable of making some of them like me, mostly because I'm unable to submit to them. But I would love it if, 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 if everyone could like me and we'd all be nice and we were all wandering around naked in a garden eating fruit off the trees the way God intended, but we're not. We don't live in that world. That world is gone. Uh, because why? 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 Oh, Mr. Wilbur, you're such a moron. Miss Wilbur, excuse me. I keep misnaming you. Miss Wilbur, what happened in the garden? What happened? Adam agreed with his wife. Adam knew what was right. And Eve comes up and says, hey, have some of this apple. And, and Adam negotiated and, and came to an understanding with his wife. They came up with a, a mutual plan of action. They, they followed through on that plan of action. They executed the plan. Uh, and now we all have to walk around with clothes on all day long. We used to be naked. It was great. It was wonderful. We wander all around all day naked, you know, prune a little tree, play with a lion, eat an apple, not an apple, eat anything but the apple. <laughs> Who is this Wilbur guy? Hey, Jimmy D, we're off on a tangent. Uh, that's what happens when you have mutual submission between husbands and wives. Uh, Jimmy D, where is the uh, supermodel led on all this stuff? I've never heard you kind of talk about any of your personal beliefs. Uh, what is your testimony, Biddy? Let's hear it. Uh, let me know if Biddy's testimony comes through and I miss it. While we're waiting on Biddy, let's go to 1 Peter real quick. 
because Miss Wilbur and her accomplice, J.K., I want to say J.K. Rowling just to make fun of her, but actually I'm starting to like J.K. Rowling. J.K. Rowling, she's got some, uh, uh, what did Mark just say about Genesis chapter 3? Uh, I'm, I'm intensely interested in what you have to say, Mark. Where was I going? First Peter. First Peter 3, one. Miss Wilbur and her accomplice there, J.K. McKee, who's at least mildly honest about what he's doing. He wants the Christ to submit to the church. Uh, yes, Amanda was battling cancer. I remember that, Biddy. Where are we at? First uh, Peter chapter 3. <clears throat> Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husband, that if any obey not the word, they talk about the husband, if any husband obey not the word, they also may, without the word, be won by the conversation of the wives. This is what we talk about when we say the wife's treatment of the husband is, is almost a challenge, sort of in a way, uh, to him to treat, to behave towards God, to submit towards God correctly. The way the wife treats her husband is a challenge to him to submit correctly to God himself. Uh, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. Ooh, we hate that. Oh, I'm into fear, man. Are you, what's, what's wrong with you, brother? Are you a Nathanderthal? But it says it right there, coupled with fear. And by the way, I've looked up that word. It's not like some King James mistranslation. It's like phobos. It's the root word for phobia in the Greek. Uh, she, she had female cancer. She's now 19 weeks pregnant. A miracle baby. Congratulations, Biddy. That is, that is so wonderful. We are so incredibly happy for you. Uh, that is a, a miracle. A, a, wow. God is very, very good. Uh, congratulations. I'm, <laughs> you, just, you just derailed me. I'm not going to be able to be angry at Miss Wilbur anymore. That is uh, some, some wonderful news. Uh, for those of you who, uh, uh, many of you know, because many of you know Biddy from the various channels she moderates on, her daughter Amanda had cancer, and uh, I, I, it's, I, I wasn't intimately involved in the details, obviously, but at, at certain times it seemed like it was, was a little touch and go, and uh, she's come through it and is pregnant. What, what an incredible blessing. Uh, uh, who's adorning? Let it not be the outward adorning, uh, that yada, yada. Uh, so, so Miss uh, Miss Wilbur wants to get real, real deep into uh, into Ephesians five, sort of. <laughs> he wants to kind of stay out. Of, she wants to stay out of Ephesians, you know, twenty two to say twenty six. But like, but like, park right there in Ephesians twenty eight and just stay there in Ephesians twenty eight. Uh, won't go close to First Peter three. Won't go for it. And that's so. Here's the other way you know not. Ugh. He's a false teacher. I, I am going to, to, to plant a flag, and I'm going to see. This is why I'm so mad at this, this, this thing. It's because you know, he claims to be a, a teacher and a scholar. Uh, he, has, he has set a very high bar for himself. He says, I am a teacher of Torah. I'm a teacher of God's word. Or no, he said, like, I'm a teacher of Torah. I'm a teacher of God's word. Uh, and, and he has no excuse then not to know 1 Peter 3. You know, he has no excuse to make an entire theology because this, this mutual submission sure stuff touches on every aspect of the faith. When you say that Christ is submit to the church, uh, you are, you because know, we, you know, we believe in the Trinity. I hate that word. It means nothing anymore. But we believe somehow God the Father and God the Son are somehow one. So when we say Christ is submit to the church, we're saying God Almighty is to submit to the church. Uh, we're probably cousins. <laughs> I don't know what was going on there, Chuck, but it sounded interesting. Uh, so, so this lie touches every aspect of our faith because it touches the very nature of God, the very nature that God we just read about in Revelation 19. All right, The, the righteous judge who, who, judge who rules with a rod of iron and wrath. And then we take that guy, see? Oh, man, you see how insidious it is? So, so Ms. Wilbur says, oh, the great, the great God, the creator of the universe, has to submit to me. God, he's making himself God. That was, that was the original sin 
When, when the serpent came to Eve and said, eat of the apple, because what did he tell her? Then you'll know the difference between good and evil, and you will be like God. All right? Mrs. Wilbur is saying, God has to submit to me. I'm in charge of God. I'm God. It's the same thing. There's nothing new. There's nothing new under the sun. It's always the same damn thing. Uh, and and this, this little Miss Thing, Wilbur, who, who claims to have a penis, he's got a little scraggly beard. She's got a little scraggly beard. Join the circus. She's too thin to be the bearded lady. Every time you see a bearded lady, a stout woman, you know. Wilbur's a little too, uh, a little too pasty, a little, little, little too soy boy noodle arm to be the bearded lady. But, but Little Miss Thing is, is going in public and saying, I am a teacher of the gospel, and God himself has to submit to me. You know what? There is not a Satanist on the face of this earth who would, would dare to make that claim. There is not, there is not, I, I mean, I can't think of it. There is no crazy witch doctor, pagan, guru, incense burning, needle sticking, lunatic anywhere on the face of the earth that would make the claim that this moron has made. This moron has said, God has to submit to me. I am the church. Christ has to submit to the church. Uh, he rises himself up to the level of God. You know what? I'm, there's, I, I know I can think of, there's a verse somewhere that talks about someone raising themselves up to the level of God. I can't remember what it is. Maybe Mark can remember that one for us. Mark's gone quiet, though. I don't know if I made him angry. What was Mark talking about? He put a verse, was it Genesis 3? No, he was... Yes, he, that's right. He did come up with Genesis 3. I'm being a people pleaser again. But he was just saying that that's where mutual submission got us, was oh, the fault. Oh, oh gotcha. Like that okay. was the whole... Yeah. All right. Sorry, I'm being a people pleaser again. But, you know, when trying to please the right people, it's not that big of a deal. Well, if you're on that, Isaac really wants you to hit a verse. Which one's that? I think we're... Uh, I don't remember, 1 Corinthians. I'm in 1 Corinthians. Have lots of children, they said. It would be fun, they said. 1 Corinthians 16. 13? 13. 16, 13. And I went all the way to 2 Corinthians. Watch ye stand fast in the faith. Quit you like men. Be strong. Yeah. Uh, I love that verse. Uh, I, I use that as a blessing sometimes, but not enough time. Watch ye stand fast in the faith. Quit you like men. Be strong. Men, most of this book wasn't written for women. I love you, women. God loves you. God loves you a lot because you represent, oh man, the way he made you guys. He made you to represent everything he desires. You represent the church. God has a a, a, a burning desire for the church. That's why, you know, we're going to the marriage supper of the lamb, you know, all this stuff. And women represent that. He, he has a, a deep, passionate, a just burning love for women. Uh, but he did not write this book to you. Most of it, some of it he did. First Peter three, he wrote to you. <laughs> the vast majority of this book is written to men and it was given to men so that we could, we could lead our families and our communities righteously. And when men lead their communities and their families by this book, good things happen. America happens. Uh, the, the rule of King David happens. Uh, what else? Uh, some of the better parts of the British Empire. Uh, Ethiopia. If you want to know some of the history of Ethiopia, check it out. It's really cool stuff happened in Ethiopia for a very, very long time. Uh, uh, any, yeah, just look, just, good stuff happens when men rule the rule, rule, I will use that word, rule, when men rule their homes and their communities by the word of God, by this book. It's written to you for a reason, and you got to know it. It's not difficult. People make it way more difficult than it has to be. I mean, you know, you can just, especially these days, you know, we got these little things in the back. We can look up anything uh, we want and go straight to a verse. Now, you don't even have to know it anymore. Man, in the old days, you have to read it and memorize it, and you have to be able to, like, Pull, even like back in the uh, 1800s and stuff, you couldn't preach in some places if you had to have notes or you had to take your Bible up to the pulpit with you. You'd have to be able to preach for hours, like two or three hours. No, oh man, we dropped a lot of people. Went down to 47. <sighs> That's okay. 
Oh, I stopped ranting. <laughs> well, I ran out of steam, and then Biddy had those really good news for us. Uh, uh, these preachers would have to go up, and they'd preach for hours, and they'd have to quote scripture, just multiple scriptures all over the place, large passages, uh, and they had to do it completely by memory. And guys like me would be down in the congregation with their Bibles going, just waiting for them to get a word wrong. You used to have to really know your Bible to, to, to teach it. Nowadays, you can get little Miss Thing Wilbur, uh, who will, you know, get on his little Bible software and look up the exact word he could show. Thank you, Chuck. The exact word he wants to look at and, and give him information without knowledge. And, and, and he slices up scripture and makes it say whatever the hell he wants it to be. Did Charles Spurgeon use notes? I don't know. That's a good question. Uh, I would like help scrutinizing the prophecies of Nicholas Van Rensburg. They're about 100 years old and seem to be legitimate, and I don't want to be the only. Uh, I personally, I didn't see who that was. I personally don't, don't listen to anything. That's not true. You never want to sit in the seat of the, of the scoffer. So uh, if someone claims to have a prophecy, I will listen to it. Uh, I, am, I, have, I have my shields very firmly up. I grew up in the Pentecostal church. I have a, a, a high degree of skepticism. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I, you know, when I talk about Messianics, I kind of put them over here a little bit because Messianics tend to be Pentecostal-ish, and, and I, am, I am leery of it in my old age. Actually, I was leery of it in my middle age. Uh, so this guy may be completely legitimate, but, but generally I would say modern, pro, modern prophecies are, would generally be, have a very specific narrow focus. Uh, but, but again, I'm not going to sit in the seat of the scoffer. It's entirely possible. God is still active. You know, the gifts are still in. Uh, I'm not a dispensationalist. The gifts are still in effect. Uh, so if I run across those, I will take a look at them. Uh, anywho, that's all I really wanted to say. You can see I'm standing up. had a lot of nervous energy because uh, Buddy Bear wants me to look at Genesis 3.16. We will do it. I just really wanted to get this out there because you know what? We are doing something special. We are doing something unique. Uh, uh, you know, the boars, I always find the boars interesting, Ryan. Uh, I haven't done a, f a whole lot of uh, research into the boars, but they're very, very interesting. I like their whole, uh, how they stood up to the, the British Empire. Uh, Genesis 3.16. So, of course, if we're doing something special, if we're trying to obey God, if we're trying to restore our faith to, to what it's supposed to be, the destroyers are going to come. They are going to sneak in. Mrs. David Wilbur is one of the worst because she is a liar. And the only reason I'm calling him a she is not to insult women because that is insulting to women to compare them to David Wilbur. Uh, it's just a tweet, Miss Wilbur, because I just despise her. Uh, Genesis 3.16. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy, con and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Well, that makes it pretty obvious. Pretty clear. He shall rule over thee. Uh, that, uh, that, that verse needs a lot of unpacking. It's not a great one to read in the King James. Uh, but anyhow, I do get the... Well, Wilbur's whole thing was that there's this Old Testament inequality and then suddenly uh, it's all yeah. back to the yeah. ideal in the new testament yeah his, his his big claim was that in the uh uh in please read first kings 2 2 uh that in the garden there was perfect equality that he called himself an egalitarian which is another way to say raging a feminist asshole uh, he, he says in the garden in the garden of eden there was egalitarianism and then uh, there was, something happened. He didn't want to talk about what happened. <laughs> uh, but something happened. You know, girl walking past there. Uh, and, you know, suddenly there was oppression. So Genesis 3.16. And then Jesus came and suddenly there was egalitarianism again. And it's all in Ephesians 5.28. It's all right there in Ephesians 5.28. Read it. It's not there. Uh, what were we doing? We were doing 1 Kings... I've had enough babies for everyone here in Like Opera, you get a baby and you get a baby. Like in Opera, you get a baby, you get a baby? Oprah. Oh, you Oprah. Oh, you get a baby. You get... <laughs> Rachel, you're, I'm sure you're a fine woman. I'm sure you've had a lot of babies. But we might, we might have you on that one. 
Uh, it was First Kings. Did you see what he did? Something twenty two. First Kings two two. How many babies do you have, Rachel? Did you go listen to it, Mark? I'm in going the wrong way. You want me to read it? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore, and shew thyself a man. Oh, is this uh, is this Joshua? No. Uh, Who is this? David's advice to Solomon. Ah, David's advice to Solomon. There's a. Was that Isaac? Who, who, Isaac, you need to read what the angel says to Joshua right after the death of Moses. Woo! Rachel, six is very, very good. That's a high number. That is uh, well done. That is uncommon in this day and age. I, I don't want to throw our number out there, too, because I want to act like I'm like one up on you, but uh, I've nined up you. <laughs> but no, I, well done, Rachel. In, in a world that despises children and tells everyone to live for themselves, uh, you know, it, it's, it's admirable. Six, six is impressive. Oh, yeah, you're, you're right, Mark. It's, it's, it is the, the liberal seminary claptrap that they, that they sabotage the church with. The church. <laughs> uh, not yet, Biddy, but I'm hoping. Uh, and they're trying to insert it into this new thing because it scares them to death. You know, oh, my God, they're out of our control. They're out of the, the churchianity uh, corporate system. Uh, how, how do we... How do we infect them? We just found out that there's a chance that this vaccines. Yeah, 15, Biddy. Uh, Mariah's pregnant with 15. Uh, one of these vaccines could potentially infect other people, or somehow they're trying to make a vaccine that you can give to one person and will infect other people. Well, that's what this Wilbur asshole is trying to do. Uh, he is a virus. Random side note, I found 100 rounds of 5.5. Oh, M855 for $15 a box. That's, that's pretty good. <laughs> Wes, you got a fair amount yourself, though, don't you? Um, so that's why this guy's so insidious, and he needs to be rooted out now. Someone needs to take one of those, those little tiny, uh, thank you, Biddy, uh, uh, forks they sell suburban women to work in the garden. You know, it's got like a big handle and a little rod and there's like this little like tiny triangle fork. Uh, buddy, this one gets under my skin because he is, he is wormed his way into our midst. He, he has, he, he appears to have some connection to a much bigger ministry that probably all Torah types, Messianic slash Hebrews people know about. Uh, and, and his, yeah, right, Isaac. And, and he, he seems to have a, a I have some behind-the-scenes information that I'm not going to just throw out there because I haven't verified it myself, but it fits. Uh, and he has a, an, an outsized influence over some, some of the leaders in our movement, the various aspects of our movement that are all going to cross-pollinate. Uh, and he, he is working very hard, and this other guy, this J.K. McKee, uh, you know, he's, he's just not a liar. But th this is the problem with Wilbur. Wilbur brings in this McKee guy, gives him credibility, tries to infect people with little little snippets of his lunacy, uh, and uh, and so that's why you know the Wilburs have to be got out. The McKees, you know, they're 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 not the problem. People will if if McKee tried to talk to my buddy Pete, you know, big tall six foot four you know, strapping Pete, you know, Pete's going to see right. Actually, and, and Wilbur's not going to influence Pete either. Wilbur hates Pete because Pete called Wilbur out on some of his foolishness. Uh, but anyway, that's all inside baseball and high school drama horseshit. Uh, but, but the Wilbur's are going to take McKee's truly heretical horseshit, repackage it, chop it up into little bit, you know, uh, some, some, some weak, Disgusting parents will try to chop up vegetables and put them in applesauce so kids will eat them. This, this, is, this is Wilbur. Wilbur's taking this, this filth that McKee is spewing, and he's chopping it up in little pieces, and he's, he's mixing it up in your applesauce and, and trying to feed you horseshit. Uh, and, and so we got to reach in there and, uh, and rip him up and throw him out. 
and like I said, he's got a little tiny channel. I mean, mine's not big, but he's much smaller than me even. Uh, but he has a much greater influence than the size of his YouTube channel. But I just saw Joel Osteen's name real quick. Yeah, Isaac's asking who is worse. <laughs> Uh, Wilbur, or uh, Wilbur. Wilbur is worse because Osteen is honest. Osteen's, you know, he's the Oprah of, of a big building with a lot of people in it who like to sing and clap. He doesn't really claim to be, you know, some hardline uh, Christian. Uh, you know, he's like, yeah, yeah, let's all be happy, let's all be free. You know, money, 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 money. You know, and anyone can look at Joel Osteen and say, okay, this is a scam. You know, this is this is a self help book. This is you know, uh, motivational speaker, you know, Wilbur's like, we're going to follow, he says Torah, this just drives me nuts, we're going to read Torah, I oh, know, <laughs> we're going to read Torah, not only does he draw the ah out weirdly anyway, then he has his own, you know, glitter face drawing out on the end of it, and it turns out into this Saturday Night Live sketch, Torah, sounds like a piano that just got, ah, hit with a hammer. Uh, I have hit, hit several pianos with hammers, by the way. It makes a lot of noise. Uh, but the easiest way to get a piano out of the house is to bust it up into tiny little pieces. Still heavy as hell, though. I'm getting a cramp in my foot. I'm standing here too long. Okay, so rant over. Let's talk. Let me find a chair real quick, though. Uh, Miss Wilbur, if you were watching this, and I, I hope to God you were, we're done with you. We're moving on. I'm going to talk to my friends here for a little while, and, uh, and you can feel free to go get your pedicure. Uh, I am sure your soft, pasty white skin needs some kind of rub applied to it with acacia and eucalyptus. And I, I have no doubt that you have to grind up your own and mix it, you know, with, you know, gluten-free olive oil or something. I'm sure that takes up a lot of your time. That's why your biblical te te teaching is so bad. And uh, you're such a lousy, dirty, heretic liar that you're going to burn in hell for all eternity in a spot hotter than almost anybody else because you're a deceiver. Hold on a second, man. I will get, and Biddy and Rachel, and I will get a chair, and we will catch up because it has been a while. Okay, so, what's everybody interested in? Tell us how you really feel, Zach. If I told you how I really felt, I'd have to say a lot of swear words. And I am not above saying a lot of swear words. Five years in the Marine Corps. Hey, Wes, you see my... When I want to be really manly, I put on this shirt. because It just makes me feel manly. Uh, what are y'all drinking on tonight? I'm drinking on sweet tea. She needs poison ivy and poison oak. I missed a lot. To rub, to rub on his pasty skin. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> got another, I like, Isaac got a Turkish shotgun. I, I like that shirt too, Wes. Axes. Okay. Have I shown them my big axe? Let me show you my big axe. Okay, here we go. So this is not my big axe. This is a full-size axe. This is an American felling axe, four and a half pounds. Have you ever swung an axe at a person? No, I have not. Uh, yes, I did. I hit my brother with an axe when we were kids. <laughs> or did he hit me? I can never remember which who hit who. One of us hit the other. I'm pretty sure I hit him. But it's entirely possible he hit me in that manipulative little convince me and it doesn't matter so this is a four and a half pound american felling axe this is the big axe this is the biggest one you can buy which is why i had adam make me this now let's see how's that show up oh no that's it's not even, it's even worse than that oh no there it is so this is a six pound. 
You can see the, the head shape is the same. It's an American felling ax. It's a six pound uh, American felling ax. Uh, if you ever watch the steel timber sports stuff, uh, they use six pound, they're called race axes with a, uh, I like big axes and I cannot lie. Uh, that's too close to what he was trying to not say, isn't it? Uh, uh, they, they use these six pound axes with a 28 inch handle but it has a special grind in it. So it's, you know, they, they, they chop poplar the Hudson Bay ax. Uh, and it's an interesting ax. It's a useful little ax, the Hudson Bay. The problem with the Hudson Bay is that the eye is so narrow that it can cause a, hey, chief, it's good to see you. They can cause the, the head to wiggle back and forth. There's not enough holding the handle when you hit really hard. Uh, and so they, they can loosen up on, on handles really easy. But it's a good, nice, light, useful ax for, for light work. What would you call the gold standard of axes? Uh, you know, everyone always says Grand Force Brooks. Oh, there's a picture I can't see with malls. I'll go get a mall too if y'all want to see. I got a nice mall. Uh, so I know Grand Force Brooks is a nice axe. I actually think that the head is not as important as the handle. I mean, how hard can you screw up an axe head? It's steel. You're bashing it into wood. Uh, uh, yeah, malls split more wood. I, I have a mall. I'll go get it in a second if you want to see it. I keep them inside. I have a lot inside. Um, uh, but, uh, so as long as it's shaped right and you've got the pattern you like, like, uh, I think Isaac just said he likes the Michigan pattern, which is not dissimilar to this. I think the Michigan pattern has a slightly lower toe and a little bit more pronounced heel. And does it have those, uh, extended cheeks? I don't remember. Uh, and, a, and a straight handles. Yeah, straight handles are better, Isaac, uh, for, for accuracy. Straight handles are better. Uh, these curved handles are a little better for fatigue, allegedly. So if you have a, so you see this is a, very, this is a pretty straight handle, uh, but it's got a little curve. And then, of course, you want that fawn's foot at the end. Uh, but the handle is what's really important, in my opinion. Because, again, as long as the head is shaped right and it's not, like, weird and off then it's gonna cut. You can put a new edge on it. And even if it's dull, you can get a file, file it down. The head is not what's important. The handle to me is what's a big deal. Uh, so one day, <laughs> KD4439 gets played, paid to split wood with a mall. All right, well, let me go get my mall real quick. Unless I'm just cutting up little stuff for the uh, grill. Okay, so this is an eight pound split and maul. Uh, someone gave me this head. I don't know where it came from. Uh, this is a 10 pound split and maul. This is what I do most of my splitting with, KDE. Uh, let's see if I can compare them for you. Yeah, it's hard to see. Uh, I had to go find this. Uh, you, you can't really find a 10 pounder anymore. I, uh, I finally found one on eBay, an old vintage head. I have no idea how old it is, uh, where it came from. Uh, it's got a little bit of a uh, hammer damage on the back, but I just left it. And I love it. This is like dynamite on a stick. Uh, I had an eight pounder that I had bought at Walmart of all the craziest things. What? Uh, <laughs> Mark uses a log splitter. Uh, I'm faster with the mall than a log splitter, Mark. Uh, where was I? Oh, Walmart. And they had this weird, weird splitting mall that was like, it was an eight pounder, but it was round on the back somehow. Uh, and, and someone just, uh, Jimmy splits with a splitter too. I won't make any age jokes, Jimmy, but that's only because I don't want to insult Mark. Uh, <laughs> Uh, where was I? Oh, and for some reason it was, it was just a bomb. I mean, every time it just split great and I lost it somewhere. I don't know where I lost it. It's, I probably left it in the woods somewhere and it's underneath, you know, six inches of pine needles. Uh, so I could never find anything that split like that. So I went up to a 10 pounder. <laughs> Biddy likes the gas powered splitter too. Uh, I don't, I put a really, so if I ever sharpen this one, 
I left the grind on this one that it came with. You know, you don't want your splitting mauls to be too sharp. Uh, you know, because you kind of want it right away to start. At least this is what I've always been told by old timers. But this, these, they like, don't want to hear it, son. <laughs> yes, sir, gun daddy. Uh, an old, old country guy grew up on a farm uh, plowing with oxen, literally. Uh, and he would say, yeah, if you don't, he would split with an ax. And he'd, 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 go, like he'd go up to the road and doll his ax on the road. Uh, uh, Plainsman, I can't make my own yet. I have to go buy them, and then I whittle them down to, to where, how I want them. Uh, but I hope to one day be able to make Mac axes handles, but who knows if that'll ever happen. I've made a couple, and they, they just, <laughs> good boy, and, and they just split. I didn't, and they just broke. I didn't do good. Uh, so I don't, I don't keep my mauls too sharp, but I have sharpened one of them. Was it this one? No. I don't know. I have just recently started using a file to sharpen. Uh, and so I'm much more willing to sharpen now because it doesn't take as long. Yeah, plastic tool handles are the worst. Uh, so I don't really have a, a grind on, on the, uh, on the splitting mauls, I guess is a long way to say that. I, I do like this one. And you can kind of tell it's a, it's a steep angle. And this, this works great. I might, I might clean this up this year, but I don't think so because it works really well. So why mess with something that works? I bet I've got... Uh, how many axes do you think I got in here? It's, it's well over 10. It's well over 10. I found one. <laughs> Yesterday I was up in my shop my shop and I was kicking some trash around and I found an axe I'd forgotten about <laughs> it's, a, it's a nice double bit is uh my brother bought me for a present years ago so I need to get it up out of the dirt but I was like oh my gosh I didn't even know I had that axe <laughs> I just love them I've got way too many yeah in fact I uh I had to tell myself no new axes you can only buy used axes from now on uh, thank you, Dr. Wilkins. We appreciate that, sir. Uh, Dr. Wilkins, were you the gentleman I met at uh, Arm and the Saints? Uh, if so, you have some interesting things to say, sir. Uh, if that was you, I enjoyed your session. There you are. Hello, Mr. Kirk. I don't know what AVT means. Oh, yeah, Dr. Wilkins led a whole session at, uh, at Bear's thing in Oklahoma, and uh, it was quite good. Someone knows Angry Viking. I don't know who that is. Surely that's not Dr. Wilkins. He was talking about the opposite of being Angry Viking. I, you know, Mark, I have not, I have so many good things about that trail boss. Uh, you know, I, some people don't like Wrangler Star. Half the time I just love them and half of the time I can't deal with them. It's one or the other. Uh, and I know he really likes the trail boss. He, he had a couple of good videos about it. Uh, I picked one up at a gun show. I mean, it's like picked one up and held it. Uh, and I really liked the way it felt. Uh, but I just bought a $120 bushcraft knife of all ridiculous things. Uh, so, oh no, that's what I had set the ax down and said, oh, maybe I'll get the ax and wandered off and came back and the $29 ax was gone. So I went and bought the $120 knife. Uh, good evening, Mr. Davis. Uh, so, but I really... I really do like that trail. It had a good feel to it. It's sort of like this modified, uh, Trevor is the ang angry Viking therapist. Okay. He comes across as the opposite of the angry Viking now. He's like the mellow Viking now. I'm not sure how. I'm really liking the new buck. I don't, I'll run and get that real quick too in a minute maybe. I don't know. I haven't had a real chance to use it yet. The thing is I will never baton with it. I, I just won't. I won't baton. I was doing something that, oh, I was uh, making a fire for the, for the grill. When we grill, we, uh... <laughs> shut up, Wes. Oh, AVT is Angry Viking Therapist. Okay, I got gotcha. you. You know what, I think I remember you mentioned that name in your talk even. Uh, but, uh, but uh, what was I doing? Oh, we, 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 we grill over wood. You know, we don't, we don't buy charcoal. I thought I was really cool when I married this woman. I used this uh, real wood charcoal. I thought, oh, man, look at this. You know, I'm... 
And when I brought it to a cookout, they all looked at me like I was some kind of sissy, you know, city boy, gentrified thing. I was really insulted. But <laughs> so my father-in-law just like went out in the woods and started getting sticks out of We were at a park and he just wandered around picking up sticks out of the woods, started a fire, and, you know, did the grill. <laughs> it's like, I found my people. <laughs> it was really cool. Well, now we, we just... We grill over wood, and I was uh, I was cutting up some cherry. Uh, my buddy Jeff had a bunch of wild cherry he'd cut down, so I went and got a bunch of it for uh, to cook on. It's one a.m. up here in rural Massachusetts. Need to get to bed. See you all later. Hey, well, hold on a second, Isaac. Where in, in rural Massachusetts are you? Uh, Mariah grew up in rural Massachusetts. Um, oh, and I, so I was cutting up this this cherry. With well, the small boy's axe, I've started to really like that that boy's axe. Uh, it's a nice, handy little axe. I don't want to admit that to anybody, um, especially since I bought a bushcraft knife. I can't be making too many changes all at once. Hmm. I still think a full-size axe is... Yo, so here's the deal. It's 6 a.m. here. Wow. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Isaac is in north central Mass near Mount Wakahusit. Wakahusit? Near the New Hampshire border, isn't it? Okay, so he's more to the center of the Weaver Western Mass. I think they were up there on that north mm. north thing, though. Yeah. Was... They were from that area. Anyway, where was I? Oh, I'm, I'm really starting to like that boy's axe. And I was out there using the boy's axe to uh, 1911 here. Well, it's a nice pistol, Rachel, but it's a little outdated. Not what we were talking about, either. Anyway, I'm sorry. <laughs> I know what you meant. Uh, on the left coast. 11 a.m. here in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains. You are on the opposite side of the Appalachian Mountains from me, Chief. Because we are also in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains. And it is 1 o'clock. Uh, 20 miles west of Worcester, Mass. Uh, and I was chopping up this, this uh, cherry with the sacks and you know I was bucking it and splitting it and all the things they tell you you have to have a saw and a bushcraft knife to do you know this stuff was some of it was well some of it was yay big around and it was already you know it was already bucked uh but some of it was you know five six feet long and I was bucking it uh and it was probably yay big uh you know Zach you're in trouble now we came to Oklahoma and y'all didn't come see me oh wait a minute Biddy. wait 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 no I was on a flying. I left work Thursday. So I worked Thursday. I left out uh, Friday morning. I got there Friday night. We had sessions all the way up till Sunday, early Sunday afternoon. And I left before the last session so I could get back and go to work. I can't remember if I went to work Monday or Tuesday. But it was a flying trip. I'm sorry. I just couldn't have. I apologize, though. Uh, uh, good night, Walter. But if I'd have had an extra six minutes, I would have definitely tried to come see you. Oh, where was I? Oh, so you just, I just don't know when you would ever baton. I don't know why it's a thing. And I don't know why people are so insistent on it. I mean, it's not just like, Will you still do a video on Isaac Davis? Yes. Yes. I had forgotten all about that, Isaac, so thank you for reminding me. Um, yeah, there was a discussion at Randa 430. I was at that discussion. <laughs> um, yeah, I forgot about that. That first night, we Friday, yeah, Friday night, we were up late. And then Saturday night, I broke it off at about 12. That was a great experience. I really had a good time at that. Uh, but anywho, uh, we were up late, but, but these batoners, man, they're just, they're like, they're obsessed with it. They're, 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 they're like true believers. And if you say, I don't get batoning, it's like, you're so stupid. Are you crazy? You're going to die in the wilderness. And, uh, uh, well, uh, you know, Dr. Wilkins, shoot me an email, the revolting man at outlook.com. Uh, or Bear has my number. 
Uh, good night, Isaac. Uh, Alex has my number. I think Mark has my number. Any, anyone who, who you were in contact from that probably has my number, so, so call me. Where was I? I don't know. I think I was on batoning again, but I'm just, I'm anti-obsessed with batoning. I'm the opposite of obsessed with batoning. I just don't get it. I just like, why? What, 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 it, what is the reason why? I don't get it. And I know like Pastor Fox, he, he sees a utility for it. And, and you know what? I am sure I would never say never. I would never say never. If Pastor Fox says that he sees utility in batoning, bam, there, there is a place for batoning. Uh, but I don't know <laughs> what it is because I'm using this ax to, to buck this wood, to split this wood, split it down into little tiny pieces. I was starting a fire from, from scratch. I was, I was using some paper. Actually, I was using a lot of paper. I think it was a big sugar bag, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but, but I didn't need a knife whatsoever. I, I don't understand what, what happened to somebody someday who said, I have to split this wood, let me use my knife. If they had an ax of any kind, how would the knife ever be a better choice for splitting wood? I don't understand it. When I, when I split wood to heat my house, because we heat our house completely with, with wood. You can see the wood stove back there. Uh, my father has always heated our, his house, the house I lived in growing up with wood. We never had central heat. First time I had central heat was in boot camp, Paris Island. My father-in-law heats his house completely with wood. I think Mariah grew up completely with wood heat. Uh, and, and so when we go to split our, our firewood, we don't take swords. <laughs> we take splitting balls. <laughs> okay, I, okay, I get that, Mark. It's for if you screw up and you don't have an axe, hatchet, or tomahawk. And, and that's right. If you didn't have an axe, hatchet, or tomahawk, then, then fine. But my question is, you don't have an axe, hatchet, or tomahawk, but you have... A Semper Fi, Hunter, uh, but you have a saw because to 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 baton wood, you gotta you gotta cut it, you gotta buck it first, and you don't have an axe, but you have a saw, mm -hmm. uh, and it's possible. I'm saying I'm saying it's possible, and you know what? If I was out in the wilderness and all I had was my knife, by God, I'll be batoning. I'll be a batoning son of a gun. Uh, so, as far as that goes, I see knowing about batoning and understanding. Having to, you know, if you had the baton, you could. Uh, but I, I'm still of of the opinion that there is just wood all over the ground. We I started a fire today to uh, to burn some uh, some brush. Uh, well, this was a separate fire from the one I started to cook on, and and I started with pine needles and a match, you know. And I I had sticks that I broke up with my hand, and I lit some pine needles on fire, and I put all the the sticks I'd broken by hand on the and I had an inferno. It was raging. Now, it wasn't wet at the moment. It had rained really hard two days ago. It maybe hadn't rained in two days, but it had rained really hard two days ago for two days straight. Uh, and and I, didn't, I didn't need to baton anything. State Park had to buy wood. It rained on the bundles. I had to make tiny wood to get fire started. I won't make any jokes, Wes, but they're swirling around up there. It's hard to make a fire with tiny wood. No, I said I wouldn't do it. Oh, I'm so sorry. <sighs> All right. So we talked about axes. We talked about splitting malls. Two of my favorite things in the world. I was using a splitting mall. So I had three brothers. Like I said, we heated with wood growing up. And dad would cut. And I learned I was the oldest brother. And I learned real quick that if I could split, I wouldn't have to carry. And I hated carrying. <laughs> so I got real good at splitting real fast. <laughs> real good at splitting real fast. Uh, and it drove my brothers a little nuts because, you know, they didn't have it. They were younger than me. They didn't have it. <laughs> oh, Chief laughed. It must have been funny if Chief laughed. Uh, uh, you know, I was just older. I just got there quicker. But I was there, and I wasn't giving it up. So they uh, they were never able to catch up, so they would have to... What's up with the shotgun? It is loaded. It is in a secure location, but not too secure. 
And I have to order that adapter to, for the mini shells. Uh, someone gave me a link for one. I'm going to do some research. and I don't understand how the mini shell adapters work, Jimmy. And if you do, please explain it to me. I accept that they do. I mean, I'm not questioning the concept. <laughs> Uh-oh, Biddy's got a bone to pick with Wes now. Uh, but I just, I'd like to figure out why they work and how they work. Uh, and then I really want to find out what that shotgun's a clone of, because I am convinced it's a clone of something. You know, it's a Mossberg clone or a Remington clone or something. I have a hard time believing that they uh, designed one from the ground up when they could just use an existing design, a pro an existing proven design. That way I can find one designed for that model, or at least the model that that's a clone of, because it looks like they are uh, model-specific. Your legs made an appearance in the video. Uh, uh, Jimmy just said something and I missed it. And I can't go, oh, I can, I can uh, go back. Tearing the rim off. Wait a minute, okay, what about tearing the rim off? Oh, 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 I think uh, I hadn't, I, I'm, as usual, ashamed of myself. I hadn't lubed it. You know, I just took it out of the box and started shooting it. I, I just, I guess I didn't think it was that big of a deal with a pump. Uh, and you can't show it now on live stream. It's a Remington clone, Jimmy says. All right, well, there you go. Thank you. I figured it was. Uh, I just think I hadn't, you know, it just stuck. I hadn't, I hadn't cleaned it. I fired that, <laughs> that Magnum. I found out those, uh, <laughs> those uh, full-size buckshot I was shooting were labeled Magnum. So clearly Wes couldn't handle it. Uh, and so I think it just, you know, it, it, it expanded just enough to stick in the dry chamber. Uh, so I tore it apart and uh, lubed it all up and cleaned it all out. I need to get a, uh, a swab for it. Uh, I would imagine there's no need for a chamber brush, right? I mean, the chamber's probably about the same size, same diameter as the barrel. Uh, so uh, so I, think, I think I solved that problem, sir. Uh, but but now that I know, what is the advantage of mini shells other than that you can carry more? I might try some, but not yet sold on them. Uh, my thing with Emplainsman is that the shotgun is for Mariah. And, you know, I, I don't know if you watched that video where I was shooting the shotgun, but I shot those book, those Magnum book shots. <laughs> Sorry, Rachel. Uh, uh, you know, I shot that Magnum book shot and, you know, the thing almost came out of my hand. Uh, you know, I'm just not going to get hurt. I, I wouldn't do that to her anyway, you know, that, that old joke of putting a bunch of low-power shells and then mixing in a high-power one so, you know, someone's, boom! I've seen it done before. In fact, my dad did it to my aunt growing up, and she, Mariah and I were, were, were over, over visiting her the other day, and she brought that up. <laughs> uh, so I just, you know, she's going to need to shoot it periodically. She's not going to want to shoot it if it, you know, beats the hell out of her. Uh, uh, you know, it's it's just... It's a little home defense thing for her. She doesn't need it to be a cannon. She might have to shoot, you know, a coyote out of the chicken coop. God forbid something. I will, sir. Uh, uh, I will test it. I'll do a video test in it just so uh, you believe me. Well, because you're gun daddy and, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get gun daddy's approval. Uh, so, I, yes, sir. Yes, sir, gun daddy. Uh... <laughs> So that's why I have the mini shells for her. That is a substantially more pleasant. Uh, I just someone just said something. What Robert say? The Opsol for my mini shells. I have two of them. They work perfectly. Uh, uh, tell me a little more about that, Robert, please. <laughs> Wes, just stop because I'm just gonna make more jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Read that first sentence again, and then maybe see if you want to retract it. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. So that's why the mini shells. I was, this was the first time I'd ever shot them, and I was very, very pleased with them. Uh, and I think they'll be very effective for the limited range she'll ever need to use them for. It is not like someone's going to take that to the face and, you know, keep coming. Uh, so that's my take on the mini shells. And as that shotgun is 
primarily for her. Never heard of the David Wilbur before this, but if he sounds like that, he needs his tongue cut out. He does, Adam. Uh, but uh, where was I? You know, if I'm here, you know, I've got all sorts of things I could grab, you know, down to a spoon. I, I'm just arrogant enough to think that if I need to fend a man off with a spoon, I could do it. Uh, but, you know, that's the thing here that, that she could use. And so it's got to be, be tuned for her. And that is why the mini shells, and I am sold on the mini shells, I am. As soon as I can make sure they, they cycle reliably, uh, uh, they can cycle reliably, I am. Well, and, and that's a possibility too, Jimmy. Because I don't need the high capacity that the mini shells bring. Uh, but I do like a nice light buckshot for her in this. Uh, and I'm just being uh, contrarian now because I know I was all sold on the number eight shot for the 410. You just go for the odds with the spoon. Uh, and yeah, <laughs> that's, that's what I was referencing, Adam. Yeah. Because yeah, it'll hurt more, you. Twit. <laughs> uh, right now, I'm sold on the 12 gauge, but I know in the past I was sold on the bird shot. But but I was sold on the bird shot because I didn't know about mini shells. You know, I wanted something light that wasn't going to hurt her to shoot. The adapters are a pain. Why is that, Jimmy? Uh, and and the mini shells accomplish that. There's something she can shoot and is not going to beat her up too much. What else? And I guess now I should do a video on my combat spoon. Although I do have a uh, a video where a spoon makes an appearance. Uh, the other spoon reference, Adam, is the first Zorro movie where uh, Antonio Banderas challenges uh, Anthony Hopkins to a duel and Anthony Hopkins pulls a spoon up. And uh, Banderas is like, huh? So there's, there's two combat spoon references in movies. I really do need to do a combat spoon. Oh, we used to have jokes about combat spoons in the Marine Corps, too, because when you're out in the field, a <laughs> fighting sport, uh, when you're out in the field, uh, <laughs> have you, have you reevaluated that sentence yet, Wes? I, I don't think any of us want to hear from you until you retract that sentence. Uh, I'm kidding. Uh, you, know, you always had your, your MRE spoon. A lot of guys would put them. You had a, a pen back then in your camis pocket. You had this little thing for a pen. You were not allowed to put a pen in there. Don't buy, dear God, don't ever put a pen in the pen hole in your pocket. Oh, the world would explode. Uh, that, that was actually worse to put a pen in the pen holder in your pocket than it would to pe put your hands in your po pants pockets. That was bad, but a pen was worse. Hey, butch. Uh, but, but a lot in the field, guys would put their MRE spoon in there sometimes so that they'd always have a spoon with them. Uh, and we'd make jokes about the, the combat spoon. Yeah, Hunter, you know what I'm talking about? Don't don't put the pen in the little pen hole. Don't, don't do it. Just don't do it. <laughs> you won't like what happens. Even admin pogue types, they knew. that, that, that It looked like a pen holder in your pocket, but it was not. <laughs> it was not. It was for spoons. <laughs> Marine Corps is so funny. I loved it. That should be a way that we... we we can spot stolen honor if we suspect a guy of, of stolen honor. Uh, oh, did they, Brian, y'all had the pen pockets on the ACUs too? When we suspect a, a guy of stolen honor, we can ask him, what is the only acceptable thing to put in the, the pen pocket of your cami uniform? And if he says anything other than spoon, we know he's faking it. You're out. And if he says spoon, then we can ask him what color The spoon is made in the USA. That would be nice. The Wally World Winchester 100 pack has fairly low powered 12 gauge shells. If available, they were cheap. Hmm. I have been in Walmart maybe two times in the last, three times, let's say three times in the last two years. And at least one of those times I was very, very angry when I left. What did Adam say? Yeah, you're right, Rachel. The army was the same way. To this day, I put my silverware in my shirt pocket going through a chow line. <laughs> Damn brainwashing. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, it was a brown plastic spoon with a really long handle. The handle was like this long. I'm not, oh, that could, to get to the bottom of those packets. That's why, I, because some of those uh, MRE packets were really long, you know, like six inches, eight inches. So Wes would be completely out of luck. I'm sorry, Wes. <laughs> I am sure you can submit a man, though. Just lobbing softballs up there. <sighs> okay. Well, hopefully we have not bored you all to no end. You see my North Point Axe collection there? Rock or something. Yes. <laughs> there was a... The, on the side of the bus, so your, your meals would be in this aluminum metal foil type package. He took the girls' math class. Uh, and then that would be in this cardboard box. And, uh, and, oh, no, no, no. The rock or something was on the heater. You would have this, this magnesium. It was like this big wafer, and it was cardboard. And inside it was magnesium, and then there was this plastic pouch. And you'd pull the top off the pouch. You'd put your meal down in the, most of you know this, I'm sure. You'd put your meal down in the bottom of the pouch with the wafer, then you'd pour some water in there, and it would heat up, and you'd warm your meal for you. But, but on the side of the package, it had instructions for how to use the heater, and they were, they were very, there were a lot of instructions. And at the bottom there was a picture, and it said, lean the package up against a rock or something. It was the exact, was the exact verbiage, against a rock or something. Yeah. And it was just... It was very amusing, and it was amusing every time you saw it. It never stopped being amusing. Uh, I don't know why. You're, uh, you're easily amused in the military, I guess. I don't know. But it were. It was very effective. It, it would heat your, your food up. Uh, and actually, it would do better. That every once in a while, you would find those... Uh, I think they were butane, but they were blocks. They were these purple blocks. Uh, and you could light them on fire, and you'd put them underneath your... Uh, you had your canteen cup, and you uh, try the Fiskars X27. If you don't like it, I will pay for it. Uh, my only problem with the the Fiskars Hunter is I just don't like plastic handles. I just made bombs. For, yeah, that's that was the other thing you did, Adam, was make a bomb. Probably because you're a Marine, probably. Uh, yeah, easily amused. Oh, I just got it. It took me a minute, too, probably because I'm a Marine. Where was I? Oh, I had something, and I, I was on some sort of... Oh, yeah, I was on the little blocks. Uh, and you could put that under your canteen cup stand and put the... I'll try it, Hunter. Uh, and you could put the canteen cup on the stand and you could warm up because uh, there's little coffee packets in, the, uh, in your MREs. Now, you hardly ever saw those because you weren't supposed to have them because you weren't supposed to have fire, even though they gave us matches. Matches were also in the MREs. They'd, they'd give us matches, but we weren't allowed to any fire because of light discipline. But every once in a while, you, you could find some of those blocks, the hexamine. I think the, I think the gunnies kept them or something. I think the S shops had them, the S4 shop had them, but we, you couldn't get them. But every once in a while, you can always tell them. I mean, every once in a while, you'd find one of those blocks. And uh, if you try to heat your, your food up on that block, it wouldn't work. But the magnesium water heater would. I don't know why, but, but that's the way it was. But you could, you could heat up water and... You make your coffee if you drank coffee. To this day, I have never tasted coffee. I have no idea what it's like. The smell is awful. I hate the smell of it. And I have a general rule about most things. I figure if I would like it, I'd have tried it by now. And since I've never had coffee yet, I must not like it. So there's no point in trying it. That's, that's, kind, of my <laughs> that's kind of my approach to most foods and drinks now. Like, I haven't had it yet. There must be a reason. KDE is back. It's good to have you. Uh, so I doubt I will ever have coffee at this point. Plus, now it's gotten to be such a, a thing for... Uh... <laughs> I don't even want to... Is there a story behind that, Rachel? <laughs> uh... Yeah, LDS. No, 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 no LDS. Uh... I'll try it. I like axes in general, Hunter, so, you know, it's not like I won't like it. What? You have never had... I've never had coffee, Biddy. Never had it. 
and it's got to be a, a thing now. Never had it, so why have it? Has anyone heard from Wes since I made such fun of him? I haven't seen a comment. <laughs> Wes, don't be, don't be sensitive. I'd text you, but I'm using my phone. <laughs> Wes, come back. Unless you're off submitting a man, then... To get rid of critters under our house. Made a horrible smell. Huh, that's interesting. I like vanilla. I don't know what hazelnut would taste like. Hey, Wes, okay, thank you. <laughs> I was worried. I'm being a people pleaser again. I'm an American. Yeah, I know, and yes, Jimmy, I know. I don't get the obsession. I mean, how do you get past the smell? The smell is just awful. But I drink sweet tea almost by the gallon. So I'm a little bit of a hypocrite. <laughs> I don't, no, I never want to see that again, Wes. It's burned into my mind as it is. <laughs> I won't repeat it because there's women present. <laughs> All right. What's next? Ooh, swinging a hammer in zero degree weather. That would be rough. That would be rough. The smell is awesome. Are you talking about what Rachel was talking about, Jimmy? Yo, enjoying the smell of urine is helpful for some man your age. You should get used to it. The, Resenberg pro the, Rens the Rensburg prophecies can be bought on Amazon in digital format for about 10 bucks. I have a paperback published in the 90s. I will look those up. Uh by the keg. Ryan, I will look up the Rendsburg prophecies and, and read them uh, and, and take a look at what's going on there. Because uh, it's, like I said, I always leave open the possibility that you never want to sit in the seat of the scoffer. And, and certainly I believe it is possible. And Jimmy is drinking some French drink now, coiffe. It cost me a lady. <laughs> all right. You know, as I get older, I actually appreciate the distinction, Biddy. You're all woman. What are the Rendsburg prophecies? What should I... Y'all saw my bushcraft knife already. I have a new fighting tomahawk from Adam, but he's not going to be making any more of them, so I don't know if he wants me to show him. He started making some interesting folders. Some he called them EDC folders. We used to just call them pocket knives back in the Stone Age. <laughs> Coffee. <laughs> uh, you you gonna retract that statement, Jimmy? Coffee, coffee. Uh, so some of those were interesting. I almost asked him to send me one, but he sends me a lot of stuff, so I hate asking for any more. Uh, an old boar farmer that had visions. That explains the name, Rendsburg. I figured it was German. It's probably Dutch, though. I think the Boers were Dutch, weren't they? The average man will be beaten into submission by 3-inch, 12-gauge magnums. They, the magnum shells, don't scare me. Is that better? <laughs> it's much better, Wes. <laughs> we'll always be haters. Don't let them bother you. That's on you. Coffee is on me. Uh, there were Frenchmen in there? Oh, uh, I don't know, Ryan. I didn't know there were Frenchmen. We have to be really careful. I'm kidding. Not much, though. <laughs> you got to be real careful when it comes to Frenchmen. Well, there's been some Looney Tunes come out of there. He lost. I did lose my spear. I still have not found that thing. Uh, I, I got a buddy who says he's got a... Uh, metal detector and I keep trying to to get him to come out here with it and help me find that dumb spear uh, but he keeps saying he will and then he never does I need to I need to harass him about it hey Patriot plumber couldn't sleep going to go back and listen from the beginning sounds like you're upset I was livid I was I, I was about to go over the edge 
but I'm done now, and now we're talking about interesting things. Interesting to me things. Uh, where were we? We were on the Rendsburg. Oh, we were on Frenchman. I live next door. Yeah, I know, Biddy. We do need to do it more. Yeah, they are... They are facing some some challenges there, Wes. I do metal fab work at home. Been working on things myself. Nothing else to really do here in Kami. Well, what are you working on, Robert? Uh, I am running out of things to say, though. Uh, everyone happy with Biden? Stop throwing stuff. Here's my question. Does anyone think he's actually going to do gun control or is it just going to, he's going to do it all through his uh, lap dog at the ATF? I think he's, I don't think we're going to see many laws. Uh, that's the metal things. That's all he can say. <laughs> just unsubbed. Who unsubbed? Adam, you didn't unsub. Remember, I'm a people pleaser. <laughs> going to stab you with a fork. Oh, it was the joke about the Biden thing. Gotcha. Uh, you know, his, uh, his ATF director is some, you know, just left-wing wacko. Tommy Hawks welding the word guns. Interesting things. Those are interesting things. Here, I'll show you my new tomahawk real quick. That? Uh, that was a masonry hammer that the boys like to mix in with the axes. This is a... Uh... Oh, I don't know what I'm missing. What about Columbia with all going on down there? Sent me a video of police shooting people on the street. You know, Robert, I did hear something about that. Yes, a new toy. Uh, Pikes, spears, knives, split him. Well, you are having a good time, Robert. Uh, uh, and it, there's, Columbia is a mess. Has been for years. I never thought it was getting better, but apparently it wasn't. There was this, this rebel insurgency up in the mountains called the FARC, which has got to be the worst name for an insurgency ever. What was that? What was that? Yeah, pretty new toy. Uh, and they were waging a pretty good, they were narco gorillas. They were all about drugs. Uh, we, I just missed something important. Uh, <laughs> that was, that was not a, uh, a politically correct statement, Ryan. <laughs> you and, you and Wes, you're in timeout with Wes. Uh, <laughs> read your last sentence again. Uh, but it, they, it calmed down. It was a big deal. Uh, the, the FARC quit dealing with the drugs because someone else took it over. I can't remember. Prophylactic. You got a camel next to Biden. Uh, but but now it's fired back up again. The government didn't do what it was said it was going to do for the FARC. They were like, FARC you, FARC. Uh, and now something else is... I'm not sure what, what happened. Suddenly there are all these people in the street and the government was shooting the people and... I haven't heard what happened, but uh, it's once again, you know, you never trust the government. I just never trust the government. Whatever the government says is a lie. Uh, and if you don't hold their feet, if, you know, if you fear the government, there's tyranny. Uh, <laughs> I know what you meant, Ryan. <laughs> uh, and when the government fears you, there's freedom. And the Colombian government apparently does not fear its people. And that is why we have a Second Amendment, because the government should fear the people. And when the government has monopoly on violence, the government doesn't fear anybody. Uh, the government wasn't supposed to have anything to do with violence when it was instituted. The states were supposed to supply the standing army. Uh, yeah, this is Wood Handle KDE. Uh, it's probably, I don't know, it feels a little light for Hickory. His idea when he made this was, you know, a fight in Tomahawk. And uh, it just ended up being 
more expensive and time consuming to make than he wanted to do. It's got a socket head. Uh, instead of a, it's, it's not a traditional tomahawk head, it's a socket head. It fits from the top and, and it's wedged in. And he painted it black and he put the paracord on there, the 550 cord. Although I feel like the 550 cord should have been at the bottom. Because it's a pretty good handle. And if it was farther down, it would make for a better gripping surface. But it's nice and light and it's really fast. And his idea was, was, was a, I think he called it the night, was going to call it the night hawk. But it was supposed to be a fighter, you know, not a worker. So I kind of like it. Uh, it is it is nice and light and fast. It's you know it's definitely you know, painted black so that when you're taking out sentries at night. No, no, no. What I meant when I said taking out sentries at night is I mean Wes was going to go on dates with him. <laughs> Apparently Wes isn't out of the penalty box yet. Uh, but anyway, I kind of like it. But I'm gonna I'm gonna hang it up. I've got three three black axes from. Uh, Wes, uh, uh, what? Damn it! Sorry, Wes. Uh, from Adam, uh, the night axe is a black double bit. Then he painted the that six pound. We call it the Baffa. We own the night. Own he who rules the night rules the fight. Uh, what a working hawk! Oh, well, Butch, the the best working hawk. I mean, I really like that Trailhawk, and the uh, the Rifleman is heavy. It does really good if you can handle the weight. Not that you can't handle the weight, but if you're, you know, if you can hold it and it doesn't get uh, fatigued, your hand doesn't get. Don't fighting tomahawks have a ball at the end for a backhand? I thought I remember reading something about that. That's interesting, Chief. Uh, they might. What does she look like this century? <laughs> Well, you know what century means, right? She's 100 years old. She doesn't look great. That's funny. It's a little play on words there, you know, century, century. Got to explain it for Sarah Dennis. Hey, Sarah. Just watched the first half of this live and I'm catching up now. Great speech. I can see. you have a weapon in your hand. I see you coming. <laughs> Hey, hey everybody, Sarah is uh, uh, one of our favorite people. Uh, we, we didn't know her through the channel. We knew her through something else first. And uh, we love her and her, her husband deeply. Uh, and she knows Pete as well, the guy that I was all spun up about earlier in, in the video. Uh, but uh, this, was, this was a special made one Patriot Plumber by... A, Adam up at North Point Axe. He's got a website, northpointaxe.com. Axe has an E in it. I don't know if that's going to show up. No. Yeah, actually, Mark, the peace pipe, I've heard, I don't have the peace pipe. I keep meaning to get it just to, because why not? But I've heard, I've had other people tell me, it might have been you, actually, uh, that the peace pipe was, was a really good uh, tomahawk. So, uh, if there will be a resurgence in conservative thought in the northern hemisphere of the world, followed by a backlash against the establishment, well, I hope so, Ryan. I actually am. I am mildly hopeful about a, a resurgence of some form of of conservatism. It's more populism, I think. Yeah, uh, yeah. Just send him a. I mean, if you're making stuff, he might just you know, tell you how he made it. I, Adam's a good guy. Uh, you know, the, the crazy Looney Tunes aren't having kids. And, you know, people like Rachel is having six kids. Uh, and, like, my buddy Jeff has eight. And the Burley Carpenter has three, which is, which is great. That's 2.1, and, and you've maintained your, your population. So three, you, you've increased your population. That's why Rachel Six is awesome. She's, she's gone above and beyond. Uh, you know, and, and the crazy weirdos was... The crazy weirdos aren't having kids. 
And you know what? They're crazy and people don't want to be like them. And, and we're starting to see some, some of the Hispanics, you know, are, are starting to, to vote their, their social conservatism. Adam has zero. I tell you what, Adam, I'll let uh, some of mine count for you. You can have one and a half of mine if you can find someone else to, to have, give you one and a half more. Uh, and, and demons can't reproduce. No, no, wait a minute, Patriot Plumber. You, you better read the Old Testament a little bit more. Uh, there's some interesting passages there about what the sons of God did with the daughters of men. Uh, making babies can be fun. And you know what? It's, you're, uh, a pregnant woman is so happy. She glows. Things get bigger. It's, I don't know why men don't keep their wives pregnant. It is wonderful. Oh, oh, joke. I'm sorry. I see Patriot Palmer. I should have. I should have read into that. All right, Wes is out. Oh, come on, Wes. This is nowhere close to as long as one of your live streams. What'd you say? You have to bounce family commitments tomorrow. In law get together. <laughs> I sorry. Pray for me. Half of them need their heads split, and the other half are Karens. Please help. All right, we're praying for uh, Wes. What did? Good night, Wes. I haven't got a job to support or testosterone to aid in conception. Well, you know, Mark, I've I've been hearing even I listen to a lot of NPR, uh, and even the crazy liberals at NPR are starting to freak out a little bit about the birth rate. They're saying, "Oh my God, we're not reproducing." Uh, and of course, how, uh, of anyone who can't complain about us not reproducing, it's those morons who have promoted this whole thing. I feel like a weirdo of a millennial for having had six. Oh, what happened? Cancel. I feel like a weirdo of a millennial for having had six, but a few of my high school friends have had four or more. So, uh, I mean, I have, it gives me hope for the future. Rachel, you give me hope. Uh, where was I? Oh, and they're starting to say, oh my God, we're, we're not reproducing. What's going to happen to this, you know, this postmodern neoliberal utopia we've built? Rachel's talking about children, and that's always, I'm not a happy pregnant person. Past 37 weeks, all mine stayed in 39 weeks plus. Good night, Wes. It's good to hear from you, sir. It's after the Civil War Wars in Europe when no one expects it that the Third World War will be sparked off by a man from Turkey that will aggravate Russia to the point of breaking. Well, that is highly likely to happen, Ryan. I was not a happy prego. I was a sick prego, kept heading the toilet almost the whole time. Okay, well, that's, that's no fun. But, well, Mariah's a really good pregnant woman, period. But, but everything about her is pretty good. It's not weird to have lots of children. I have seven. Yes. It's different to what others do. That's all. It's you, and Sarah, yours are stair-stepped, right? I mean, yours are like six months apart or something, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> and Chief has five girls. That poor man. Sarah, what, what, what's the year spread from your first to your last? Nine months, one day. Aren't, isn't full gestation 40 weeks? Yeah, Sarah had seven kids in 10 years. Ugh. Sister was a woman in the Christian school her kids attend was three months pregnant, got the vax. 24 hours later, she aborted from the vax. Ugh. I just read about a baby who got it from nursing. Really? My mom, yeah, got vaccinated, and the next day the baby passed away. Oh, I don't know if y'all heard Mariah in the background. She said, uh, Biddy Boo has seven. Adoption counts, Biddy. Maybe even more so. Uh, I count my stepchildren, too. I've got three stepdaughters who I factor into my 15, because, see, the oldest one was nine when Mariah and I got married. And the youngest was three. So I was in their lives long enough. I get to claim them. 
It's been a ride. I hated pregnancy too. I don't do pregnant well. Spend most of it with my head in the toilet as well. Totally worth it. Maybe I just got lucky. Well, I did. I got very lucky. <laughs> okay, then. 40 weeks and one day. You know, Z, jokes aren't funny when you over <laughs> I'm sorry, Chief. <laughs> Landon has five boys so far. My wife is awesome. Yeah, there you go. Maybe that's what it is. You know, when your wife's a fun pregnant woman, you know, it's like, let's have kids. I don't know what was going on with uh, Samuel there, Sarah. TFI Media Group, right-wing Trump supporting Indians. Right <laughs> Brian, you have such interesting comments. Made a video guessing that Erdogan would start a third world war. I'm confident they have never heard of Rendsburg. Uh, I think Erdogan may be running out of steam, Ryan. Just a little, I kind of follow Turkey, too, because I think Turkey is extremely important going forward. Uh, um, extremely important. Uh, so I actually agree with you there. It looks like Tur Erdogan himself, you know, maybe, like I said, maybe running out of steam. Turkey's economy is about to take a hit. Of course, you know what? He might need a war then. You know, that's, you know, that, that's the last, last uh, resort of, of wannabe dictators. And you got to start a war. So who knows? You may be right. But uh, he, is, he is facing some headwinds in Turkey right now. Hunter, it was good talking to you, brother. Good night. He is belligerent, Ryan. My ex-husband got sympathy symptoms with our third really bad. So bad he started lactation. What? Is that what? He went to... What? I, I can't wrap my head around that, Rachel. Um, a man who could lactate could father children? I... Mind bomb. He was a marine. You're making it up. I uh, surely he was a soldier. Uh, Robert, yeah, it is wrapped in what we call 550 cord. I was I was saying earlier, I think it should have been down a little lower, but I couldn't make a tomahawk if I tried. So who am I to have good ideas? I, I got to know more about this lactating guy, Rachel. Okay. <laughs> he did. It's got to be a sailor. Yeah, this was a sailor, right? My apologies to any sailors in the chat, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Don't you deny it. <laughs> it moves. <laughs> Wait, what, what am I missing? I could wrap my cold wrist around. Man, boobs. Yeah, everyone, Rachel, everyone is like, wait, he lactated? What? I'm serious. I flipping lost it. Yeah, he was a soldier. He's army. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes a little more sense. <laughs> Did he make a taste test? <laughs> ah, 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 stop it. <laughs> wrong. Most of the hair on my chest is on my nipples. I just can't even, I won't, I won't do it. Ugh. It's something that's so beautiful and pure and perfect and what? No, this doesn't work. Uh, you lost it. You would have been a coasty. <laughs> well done, Adam. <laughs> Not Mark, my ex. My ex is Army. My current husband is Navy. Ah. All right, Rachel, well, I won't make fun of your sailor since it was the soldier who was, maybe he drank too much IPA. I tell you, okay, thank you, KDE. Let me climb up on a soak spot, soapbox for just a minute. I won't be as mad about this as I am about Wilbur, but I am so sick and damn tired of IPAs. Did you try it in a coffee as a creamer? IPAs are everywhere. I like a good beer. I enjoy a good beer. And if you go to any, you know, package store, you, you go to look, it's all IPA. I mean, it's all IPA. It's just top to bottom. And they won't have, they won't even have a porter. There won't be a porter, but there'll be just cases of IPA. And you know what? Someone just said IPA is okay, but overrated. It's exactly. He totally had moves. It's exactly. It is. It's, it's fine. It's okay. I'd drink it if you bought it for me. It's my favorite kind of beer is free beer. 
But it's just, what's the deal? Why, 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 why does everything have to be IPA? Why can't we have a good solid porter? And now I like stouts. I do. I like stouts. But, but if you're not going to have, it's not going to be IPAs and it's not, you know, American beer. <laughs> IPAs create man titties for real. All right, KDE, explain it. Uh, IPA is an, an India pale ale. Biddy, it's a type of beer that, that all the soy boys really like. I told them to make his own cheese. An English IPA. All right, Ryan, I'll keep an eye out for one. <laughs> Robert. <laughs> uh, IPAs are nothing more than a trend. Three quarters of the people who drink it actually don't really care for it. Wow, lots of hops. There's, there's just lots of hops. Uh, but it's too much. For, for me, it's too much hops. There's a chemical in it. Is the chemical from the hops, KDE, or is it just something they're putting in to, to achieve something? Probably, well, <laughs> there's definitely something they're putting in to achieve something. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but, but why can't you just have a good, solid porter? That's it. It's a, just a good, solid beer. Uh, and if you... And, and they still have to take the good, solid porter, and then they got to turn them into stouts. And so now they're 13% alcohol. That's yeah, fine. It's, it's fun. I like them. But if you just want to sip on something and you don't really want to, you know, be three sheets to the wind, why can't I have a porter? Just make, a, or if they do make a porter, it's got to be mocha, chocolate, vanilla, ugh. something separate from the hops. Huh? Anyway, that wasn't a really good rant, but it just drives me nuts. Before refrigeration, shipping beer from England, India, they added hops to, yeah, to keep it from going bad. See, and I'm okay with that if there was a reason behind it. Ryan, Porter is really good. Uh, uh, it's, it's dark. That's how they make a Porter. They roast the malt before they make the wort. Yeah. Do you ever get sweet potatoes in? Uh, no, we have not gotten the sweet potatoes yet. Our garden is actually a little bit behind. Uh, we haven't got anything planted. How about a good old Bud Light? No, Jimmy, no. You're gun daddy. You're clearly not beer daddy. <laughs> and those two things shouldn't mix, really, so I, I guess it's a good thing. Uh, now, we, we're going to get some slips from our local feed store. Have you been checking? Do you know when he's going to get them in? No, I don't think he gets them in January. Or it's May. Anyway. <laughs> All right, Patriot Plumber is leaving us. Down to a two instead of a ten. Feed the good wolf. Glad to see. Oh, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. So not beer daddy. <laughs> Thank you, Patriot Plumber. Good night. Biddy said something funny, but I missed it. Sorry, Biddy. I'm sure it was funny. Maybe that is why the guys are wearing man buns to go with their moobs. <laughs> okay, yeah, that was funny. All right, I know, Adam. It's history is the way cooler than the soft people that make it these days. I want to try OE in the 40-ounce bottle. <laughs> Boone's Farm, baby. Uh, what did KDE say? Sorry, this is distracting, I know. Blondes, Belgian blondes. Actually, I do like... Uh, I don't normally like Belgian beer. That's not true. Sometimes I like Belgian beer a lot. Belgian beer is either really good or really bad. But I do like the blondes, which is the only blondes I like anymore. <laughs> yeah, you... Uh, you would probably like Porter than Mark. I, you probably do. I'm probably telling you something you already know. Uh, I really like Porter. I want you to be on a woman, not a beer. I like a belching beer too. Unicorn farts and bunny far hearts and bunny farts. I don't. How long have you been here? You haven't said nothing yet, Unicorn. Uh, I like uh, Yingling too. I love Yingling. If I'm gonna drink, if I'm gonna drink something that's not, you know, like a Porter or a Stout or something. I'm old enough to disagree with you, youngsters. Yeah, you're, you're old enough to have been raised on awful American beer before we started making good American beer. It's okay. You guys won three wars. The uh, Civil War, the Spanish-American War, and World War I. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jimmy. <laughs> it wasn't that funny, but I really liked it. <laughs> oh, I have to try that, Ryan. 
20 slips cost me 30 bucks here. We cannot get them. I bought 90 pounds of Yukon gold. Oh, 20. Uh, damn it. Yukon gold seed potatoes, and they were almost sold out here. These are yellow potatoes. Uh, Butch, you should at least try the yingling. It's really good. Jimmy D grew up in Canada. That explains so much. <laughs> Port and Madeira. Nice. I've never had either one of those, I don't think. What was Canada like in the 1880s, Jimmy? <laughs> no, if you like loggers, Butch, uh... Yeah, Adam, I, I had to give up liquor. You know, I like sipping it, but then sipping always turns into something more. Uh, uh, no, I know it sounds, it sounds Chinese, Butch, but it's, uh, it's German, I think. It's Y-U-E-N-G-L-I-N-G. It's very simple, but it's a bottom fermented lager. It's not that top fermented crap. Uh, and it's, it's affordable. You know, it doesn't cost any more than the Bud Light. But it just has a good little flavor. It, it drinks well. It's very enjoyable. <laughs> uh, World War II, Korean, Vietnam. Yeah, that's that was the joke I was playing. Uh, you got that. Never mind. Uh, can't get Yingling up in Wisconsin. That is a shame. Right, lager is bottom fermented, but all the most of the cheap American beers are the you know, the the sailor lagers, but they're top fermented lagers, Bush. In 1867, British Columbia was invaded by giant beavers, but that's another story, and Jimmy could tell it to us. <laughs> so, like, yeah, but Bud Light and, and Coors Light and Budweiser and all those are a top fermented lager. Well, I guess maybe they're not technically lager by, uh, yeah, I know, they're not technically lagers, but... You, so many people, you, know, you, you say lager, and so they think, well, well, I like Budweiser, Bud Light. And you know, the point is, Yingling is that bottom fermented lager. It's like, you know, lots of people think Jack Daniels is bourbon. It is not. It is charcoal-flavored whiskey. I've had giant fevers before. <laughs> I don't, I'm not going to touch that with a 10-foot... Oh, Jimmy, <laughs> you won. <laughs> I'm reminded of the Monty Python sketch from the Holy Grail. Yeah, you know what? You're right, Ryan. The hippies brought us craft beer. You are right. Do you get beer from Alaskan Brewing Company? They make an amazing smoked porter. No, I've... I don't, I've never seen it, Adam, and I would love to try it because I love me some porter. It is my favorite beer. Uh, I, there's this thing called the Taddy Caster. It's made, it was, maybe it was the original porter. I don't remember. Uh, Jimmy D almost died from the fall. Uh, it is superb. It's better on tap, but most things are. Uh, but the bottles are really good, too, and uh, I just fell in love with it. It's called, yeah, the Taddy Caster. It's two different words. Taddy Caster. It is a porter, and it is, yeah, Yingling is, is the great little lager. Uh, and it just showed up here in Georgia probably 10 years ago, and we had never had it prior to that, and it changed my life. Email your mailing address again sometime. I will, Adam. Uh, so I think now we've exhausted beer. Well, you can't really exhaust beer, but we've exhausted my knowledge of beer. I used all the words I know. My, you've exhausted my vocabulary. And now I have, I'm in Atlanta a lot, Adam, so I'll look for that Alaskan. Hey, Robert, I do accept seeds, but I, we're really sketchy about giving out the address. We don't have a, a, uh, a, a P.O. box or anything. So we, we don't. We, it's very hard for us to, to get things from people, and I, it's, a, it's a downside because I know there's a lot of good people who want to be a part of what we're doing, but we just got to be a little careful. Beer is rather wet, yes. Is Betty leaving? Is Biddy leaving us? Oh, yeah, Biddy's going to bed. Thank you, Biddy. It was great seeing you, hearing from you. Uh, 
but I do appreciate the offer. What do you have to, for us to plant? I'd be interested in knowing what you were thinking about. Because uh, we do want to add some new stuff. We've got our tried and true favorites, but it would be good to branch out. Uh, and apparently we got to go check on the sweet potato slips. Uh, did you decide if you want to do the Georgia Jet or the Beauregard? That's whatever he's got. I think he has both. Or he's had both in the past. All right, man. We're going to call it. Oh, well, no, never mind. Robert said something interesting. Uh, he's got tobacco seeds. I have tried to grow tobacco a couple times. Uh, and as you well know, Robert, the seeds are, they look like pepper. They're just so minuscule. We've got tobacco plants growing. Do we? Yes. <laughs> well done. There's like 10 of them or something out there. Where at? Right on the porch. Oh, really? In the flats? Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. So I've gotten one. No, I've gotten a... I think I've gotten one plant to maturity. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't smoke, but I do like cigars occasionally. Uh, so I got one plant to maturity. It was really cool. It looks like some sort of alien. Uh, Robert, you can tell us what your success has been. It was about six foot tall. It had just weird pods on the top. There were big leaves at the bottom. It was a little bit like a Christmas tree shape. Really, really cool. Ryan said something interesting that I missed. Don't you have to have rather acidic soil to grow tobacco? I think we have rather acidic soil anyway down here. Uh, we live in a clay mud pit, uh, a thin layer of clay over a layer of uh, granite. So I think we have acidic soil anyway. Uh, the problem with the... Uh, Uh, where was I? I don't know. I was saying something about tobacco. I think it's hard to get them started because the seeds are so small, and I think they come up slow. But apparently we have 10 plants growing. Oh, they have a really nice smell. And uh, I, I, I think they repel bugs, too, to a certain extent. So I'm excited. If we've got 10 plants, I'm going to try to get all 10 of them. I don't know what to do with the leaves, though. I'll have to... Uh, someone's leaving. Who's leaving? Oh, is, is that... Katie is leaving. I'm sorry. I thought you were saying goodnight to someone else, Katie. Uh, good night, sir. It was good to, to hear from you again. Thank you. There is a storm on its way. There's no doubt about that. So I'm really excited about tobacco then. I didn't know that I had tobacco to be excited about, but, but now I do. Does lavender work for repelling spiders? I do not know. We like spiders. They eat other bugs. You don't, you don't want to repel spiders for the most part. Uh, just keep piles of cardboard and r really rotten wood away from you know, where the areas where people are. That way you won't have the brown recluses. Lavender does not work for Alaskan spiders. How do you guys, how is it so cold up there and you guys have such problems with bugs? Here, when cannabis took a nosedive, people were selling off their equipment. I bought some for one man, T5 lights, etc. Used to grow tomatoes. I didn't know that cannabis took a nosedive, Robert. I wonder what happened. I thought that was going to be a growth industry. Uh, but yeah, we don't repel spiders. Uh, we try not to repel anything, really. Uh, the chickens do a pretty good job of keeping the fire ants out of the yard. And I think tilling and plowing tamps them down a little bit uh, in the garden. But they're still up there. Yeah, also, I don't treat wasps because wasps you know, eat bugs. It went crazy, then crashed. I had no idea. I wonder what happened. We even have a frog that goes into a semi-frozen state but survives all winter, even to negative 80. That's insane. Absolutely insane. I wish I could find some government repellent, but I digress. Yeah. If you could find a government employee to spray it for you, you just don't want to get that stuff on you. 
and I know we all have. I don't miss Alaskan spiders, but I'd trade them for these bugs in Hawaii any day. Eee, Hawaii. I don't know, it'd be fun to visit, but I wouldn't want to live there, I don't think. I would like to see an active volcano, though. That would be cool. The natives up here would keep the wasps and yellow jackets around when they... Got to finish the story, man. You leave us hanging as a cliffhanger? Stay around for part two. When they're curing their meat, the wasps and yellow jackets keep the flies away. Interesting. Yellow jackets are something I'll treat if they're around the house. My brother and I want to buy land in Tennessee, possibly, so we can survive what's coming. There are some really good deals in Tennessee. Uh, there was some land I wish I could have bought recently. I think it was 40 acres, $80,000. It was completely raw. It was wooded. It was in the, some mountains. It was well situated. Uh, I just didn't have $80,000. They will eat some of your meat, but it's better than maggots. Anything is better than maggots. So now I've got a reason to keep yellow jackets around. I don't know. I don't like yellow jackets. Not around the house. I'll let them live anywhere else, but if they're around the house, they got to go. I had, I had a buddy, you know, we were digging around, you're always stealing stuff. And, uh, we had stolen some, uh, maybe we hadn't stolen it. Maybe we had found it or something, but there was this case of said insect repellent and we were Marines. We didn't read any farther than that. And, uh, he was, he was using it. He said, man, this stuff's great. Uh, and, you know, we had Humvees because the missile systems we were on, mounted on Humvees. And we were set up in this swamp one night because Camp Lejeune is just one giant swamp. And there was all these mosquitoes in the Humvee. And one of the guys took that stuff and he sprayed it on his windshield because there were, the inside of his windshield because there were all these mosquitoes on it. And this ballistic windshield, it was ballistic rated uh, for uh, grenade, gr grenade shrapnel. And this... This insect repellent, these other guys had been spraying on them. You know, they've just been, shh. It, it ruined the windshield. It, it ate the, the plastic or whatever. And it did all these little cracks and it turned foggy and, and the windshield was completely wrecked. And so we started looking at it and it was for spraying on tents. You would spray your a tent with it and let it dry and then the mosquitoes wouldn't get on the tent. And these guys were spraying it on their bodies. Put up a fake nest on your porch made from newspaper and glue. I think Australia is the only place I wouldn't like to live. Lethal poisonous spot. Yeah, you're right. Australia is just one giant death trap. What do you think about the fiat system crashing and going to Bitcoin? Uh, we know it's going to happen, Archangel, because, well, those of us who, who take a literal view of the Bible, we know that cash money is going to be abolished. And we're not going to be able to buy or sell. And if that doesn't sound like electronic currency, I don't know what does. Uh, so for for me, uh, not, not that I have massive amounts of resources. Yeah, <laughs> well, Atlanta, it's a different kind of death trap, Adam. Uh, we, we will not participate in Bitcoin or any of that. Uh, I know at some point it will get to the point where we don't have a choice. And so we will do what we have to do it then. But at some point, we've got to make a stand. And electronic currency is, I mean, it's just the greatest tool for tyranny there is. You know, they can have complete control of your money. Uh, and, and they can do, I mean, they already have a pretty strong control of your money. But once it's all digital and, and, and they control all of it, I, I mean, you know, game over, man. Game over. You know, that's just total economic control and we all know people will do anything you know hungry people will do anything scared people will do anything so i am just 100 percent against digital currencies uh, and fiat money is not much better i mean it looks better now that we have digital currency yep yep lead and brass well done but that's that's what i say lead and brass precious metal uh, yeah black market gold and silver I mean, for a while, things will be bad enough that beans will, beans will be really valuable. Do you have any idea about sanctified industries? I have not, Archangel. First, I've heard of them. Uh, you can give me some info. 
I would look them up on my phone real quick. Yep, North Korea, here we come. And we're all out growing potato or trying to grow potatoes in constant constant famine. Constant famine. I heard we had a I say invest in a homestead and livestock, yes. I one of uh, one of my buddy's wives told me that they're about to start sending everybody checks starting in July. Uh they're gonna give you like an advance on your earned income tax credit, which in and of itself, even though, I mean, we, we clean clock on that earned income tax credit, and I'm not saying don't. I mean, if you get it, take it. But, you know, the earned income tax credit was a terrible thing. That was, uh, do you see the veggie ice cream coming out? I did not see the veggie ice cream. <laughs> uh, not, like, I didn't know it was coming out, and I didn't see, I didn't even, couldn't predict it that that was going to be a thing. What about those? I love those, Adam. Uh, I haven't, I've done a lot of research on them. You know, I've got the Gravelys. Uh, and I, when I was researching the Gravelys, I started seeing the BCS tractors. Now, here's the problem. They had this really bulletproof diesel, little diesel motor that ran forever. And, of course, you couldn't have that, so they outlawed it in America. But if you can find one of the old ones with the diesel motor, or if you can find the diesel motor and retrofit one of those, uh, the, the Honda motor's fine. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, but I really like those BCS two-wheel tractors. When my, you know, one day when my Gravelys finally wear out, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll probably switch over to those BCS tractors. You can do a lot of work with those things. Uh, a lot of work. Unicorn. I don't know what Jacama is. Uh, but what do you think about sweet potatoes? You might live up north, though, so. California, they want to give pregnant or women with children $2,400 a month for supporting them. And they will see men thrown out of their homes at a prolific rate. Diesel is always better. That's why they got rid of it. But... Uh, those those tractors should be able to if you can find the right diesel motor. Jimmy's tractor says Kubota on it. The that was probably made about forty five minutes from where I sit at this moment, Jimmy. Unless it's an older imported one, but if it's one of the newer ones, Tommy Gun invest in lead. I agree. If it's you've know, been made in the last twenty years, it was probably made right here. You'd think I could get a deal on one, but the people who work there can't even get a deal on one. Texas, not north, okay. Jacama, Hiama is a starchy root. I do like sweet taters. I'll have to look into Hikama. I'm not familiar with it. Starchy roots are are good uh, calorie sources, though. They got rid of diesel down there, and they're not up here. Uh, so they got rid of, yeah, no, the Fed. The feds got rid of small diesels, Adam. Uh, so this was a small diesel, 2020. Yeah, it was made right here, but... Uh, uh, so yeah, the, the, you can still get obviously diesel tractors and diesel cars and everything, but you can't get small diesels. So like diesel generators, uh, uh, pumps. Yeah, he's rich. Yeah. Uh, and so you can't get that that small diesel on that that two wheel tractor anymore. And and that is a crying shame because by all accounts it was a wonderful motor, and would just run for years. Uh, we are talking, uh, I don't know if it's two cylinders. I, I just know small diesels, Robert. I don't, I don't know any more than that. And I was at a BCS dealership. I was actually at the Mother Earth Fair, Mother Earth News Fair, or Mother, I can't remember. Anyway, that's a really cool thing to go to. And they had a BCS dealership there. And, and he, he said, look, you got to buy this one right now. They're out the motor next year. I couldn't have bought that thing right there if I had, I'd had to sell children to buy that thing uh yeah yeah it's still going <laughs> people keep saying interesting stuff and so we just keep going uh, but but that's how i that's where i got that information about those diesel motors he, he told me that they were mother earth news men how can you forget well i can't i just can't remember if the news part is in the fair or not if it's just the mother earth fair but i guess it's the mother earth news fair very cool. 
It is possible to convert a rear tine tiller into a walk behind tractor. Is it possible to convert a rear tine tiller into a walk behind tractor? I have thought of doing that, but maybe it wouldn't really work. You know, my one thing about that MT is, well, you know, there are just those Gravelys around to be had. Uh, the David Bradleys are still around to be had. Uh, there's the Sears Simplicity is still around to be had, and those uh, and the BCS is there. Uh, so, so the problem you're going to run into with that rear tine tiller is, you know, it's probably a chain drive, but you're going to have to find a way to, to cut off the, there's, there's not going to be like swapping things out. You know, you're going to have to do something permanent to your rear tine tiller, which is, I mean, that's fine. If you got what you want, that's fine. Uh, but, but my guess is you'd, Unless you just like engineering projects and we get Patriot Plumber back in here, you're probably going to be better off finding an old Gravely. I see uh, there's Gravely uh, pay, uh, groups on Facebook, and I, I all the time see uh, uh, let this girl walk around with having to, I having to be broadcast all over the world. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, I see Gravelys all the time with, you know, they'll have a bush hog deck. Uh, they'll have the rotary plow and the tiller. They call it cultivator, but it's what we think of as tillers. Uh, and like they'll have a sulky, which is just this seat you you can ride behind. Uh, and you you'll be able to get all that for five hundred bucks, you know. And and the damn things just run forever. So while it would be an interesting engineering project, oh, Rachel's still with us. I have a chapter to read, and I have to get up early. Really have. Nice life, fight the toxic feminists and all the good stuff. Take care of them. Good night, Rachel. Thank you. Uh, so I would say save yourself the hassle and, and go find an old Gravely. Have you heard about the power grid changing over to solar from Tesla's tower? What do you think? Well, that's, you know, the thing is, the sun's only out half the time. And what do you do the other half of the time? Yeah, you you can't have batteries that big. I mean, I've always heard it said that the the grid is a battery, but I don't think it's a battery the way we think of it as being a battery. Um, so I don't see how it works. Now it works for me. We don't have air conditioning. You know, we don't have a lot of the things that you know we heat with. Uh, we cook with propane. We heat with wood. Yeah, it's all about storage. Who was that? Was that Adam? So, you know, and probably most of you guys, too, I don't think Adam needs air conditioning very much. Uh, so, so men like us are probably going to be fine. But, but the rest of the nation, you can't, you can't do it. You know, how do you keep a ventilator going at night? Uh, your CPAP machine. You know, the old people have these CPAP machines that keep them from, uh, from dying, Here in Washington State, they're trying to get rid of natural gas. I worked on the line, 100 milliwatt gen sets. Gas comes out of Canada, all power goes to California. They put this in after Enron. Now they are pushing for nuclear. I, I think nuclear is the way to go. I know it has that giant downside of, you know, killing everybody. But, you know, the grid is not a battery like we think of batteries. We can run up the, the turbines to create more during high... Ayusha's uh, times and back them down during low. But I don't know how solar helps you at night. I don't know how it helps you, you know, on rainy days. Uh, you know, I, I just, I, you know, living down south, I don't think about these things. I, I heard recently, I read recently that, you know, up north, when it snows and they get covered in snow, you're done. There'll always be natural gas. <laughs> Your name is apropos then, unicorn. Uh, uh you know, what do you do up north? Do you have to hire people to go out and, and clean all of the solar panels all the time? I will tell you this. Those big giant solar panel installations where they cover acres and acres of land with solar panels. Uh, how the hell is that any better for the environment? You know, you're, you're covering all that land with gravel and panels. Yeah, this is not environmentally friendly. That's insanity. 
And it's like, I can't remember how many acres it takes to power one house, but it's, it's multiple acres. You know, you would have to cover like the entire continent with solar panels and you could still only run like, you know, Chicago or something. Dean is here. Hey, Dean. Uh, David Wilbur is someone who pissed me off, Dean. Uh, so I like, uh, just to finish up the solar real quick and then we'll get back to Dean. I like solar for individual installations. Like we have solar panels, uh, and that's good. But if you try to make it a big scale thing, then I think it fails. I think it has to be a small scale, uh, individual installation. Dean, it is great to see you, brother. Uh, Wilbur was a feminized soy boy who said something stupid and made me lose my temper. So I went off on him for probably 45 minutes. And he'll probably never see it, but just in case he does, he'll know that someone someone called him on it. Yeah, how long has it been since we've seen Dean, Jimmy? Uh, it may have been David's uh, memoriam. Look up Thorium. We basically wouldn't. Yeah, I've, I, Adam, I actually I read about the Thorium in a uh, Popular Mechanics one time, and I think they're. Instead of the big rods, they make these small balls. Is Wes still here? No, Wes left. Uh, they'd make these... <laughs> I'll have to put... It's just a long rant. I get very animated and an upset Dean. It's, it's all inside baseball. But I just had to say something. Uh, and, and yeah, so they, they, like, they don't melt down. They don't have the big, horrid things. It's very, very interesting. And I, I think it would be a a great system going forward. But you, you always do your live show when I'm at work. Yeah, I know. I don't know. We, we're on separate schedules. Uh, but the thing with the environmentalists is they don't want to solve problems. They don't want to find clean energy. They want to take energy away. At the end of the day, they hate people. They want to take 7 billion people and condense them down to 500 million people. They, they want you all to die, all of us to die. There's not one of us here tonight that would make that 500 million person cut. We would all be the social undesirables. So when they want to get rid of our power sources, they don't want to replace them with, uh, uh, you know, efficient, clean alternatives. They want the power sources to go away. You know, if we don't have electricity, they don't think we can live. Joke's on them. The 32 people on this live stream would be just fine. Georgia Guidestones. Yeah, Ryan, those are those are real close to us. Probably f 45 minutes away. Uh, I've actually never been to them. I've heard about them my whole life. Yep, Dean's right. It's always a power grab. That's, it's just straight up power grab. Uh, unless it's, you know, college professors who just want to lay co-eds. But it's that or a power grab. And that probably is a power grab, too. So as much as I like the thorium, I don't know that it's going to happen because it's a good solution and they don't want good solutions. They want problems uh, so that they can have a constituency. Oh, it's so terrible. Only I can save you. Oh, help me, help me, help me. Yes, Agenda 21. I don't know what's going on with those guidestones. So I suppose I've talk talked to people who say no, who put them up. Like I said, it's a local thing here. Our, our high school plays their high school in sports. Uh, but I've just never done the research and tried to figure it all out. It's someone stupid saying something stupid. You know, that area, that's a town called Elberton, or Elbert County. And uh, it used to be the granite capital of the world. It produced all the granite, most of the granite used around the world. And so there was a lot of money down there uh, for a while. Or people took a lot of money out of there. Uh, I think I think most of the money people they made it up. I missed something. What's Jimmy talking about? Oh yeah, the COVID. Yeah, they made it up, and it's just sort of, they didn't realize it at first. Like, oh yeah, ten days to flatten the curve. Oh wait a minute, we got something here. No, 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 no. Lock it all down. Uh, I think climate change is a, is a total fiction. Uh, I have been convinced by the. Uh, 
Yeah, I, I agree, uh, Dean. I just, I, I wonder who, what local idiot did it, because why is it in Elbert County, Georgia? You know, it's just, it's such a weird place to put something like that. Uh, and I, I'm not familiar with Gladstone. Uh, my my take on global warming is it's total farce. It's like COVID. It's a manufactured crisis to, to perform a power grab, like we were saying. Uh, you know, it gets hot in the summer. It gets cold in the winter. What should interest us? See, ag global warming is actually good because it makes agriculture easy. Uh, so, uh, you know, when they say, oh, the climate's warming, we should all be like, hey food's going down price food prices are going down what is this adam oh yeah yeah the impending ice age which i i actually i kind of i kind of agree i i think we are we are set for some cooling i don't know if ice age the way we think of it is is an accurate description but uh you know it, it's it's first and last frost dates which you got to pay attention to there's been times in this in our nation's history that uh, uh, some of the northern states did not have a single month without frost, that it froze in every month. Uh, this was back in the, it wasn't the Maunder minimum, but it was one of the other minimums. And, uh, and so like New York, Massachusetts, Maine, definitely, that they had no growing season. You could not grow any crops. Uh, I, was it one year? I can't remember. Uh, and that wasn't a deep minimum. It wasn't the deepest minimum that we know about. There was the, the, the minimum of the solar activity in the sun. You all know this stuff. Uh, and I mean, there's sunspots. There's less energy coming out of the sun, so the earth doesn't warm quite as much. And obviously, if you don't have a growing season, if you don't have a single 30-day period without uh, frost, you can't grow crops. No grain crops. Yeah, you know, and you know that winter was a pain in the ass. Uh, so I do. I think, I think the the it's called the solar grand minimum, uh, and it's not gonna. I don't think the next couple of years are supposed to be that bad. I think starting in twenty thirty is when we're really supposed to be like eee. Uh, thirty four hundred years ago, the English Channel was bone dry. Look at the man made structure of stone off the coast of Japan. Japan. 90 meters below ocean level. Look at the 1,300-year-old stone object above Fukushima. Some pine bark. Yeah. yeah it's going to be a little rough up there, Adam. Of course, I don't know. You're, you're close to the coast. I think that does weird things to the weather, doesn't it? Uh, Braveheart is really good, Freedom Chaser. I love the 357. Uh, my favorite Mel Gibson movie is probably The Patriot. Uh, I don't know. I really liked... Uh, I like almost every Mel Gibson movie. Uh, I really liked Apocalypto. Uh, a lot of people didn't necessarily see that. I bet a lot of people did, because he did it in, uh, like, the, they tried to recreate the language of the Mayans or the Incans or the Aztecs. I can't remember which one. And did the whole movie in that. Yeah, as long as the lead holds out. There you go. Uh, I didn't see Get the Gringo. Mad Max is good. Uh, but I really like Apocalypto and, uh, damn it, I just said it. Oh, The Patriot. That's why I like Tomahawks. The secret's out. My love of Tomahawks stems from that movie. Uh, what else? What other movies do I like? Ah, uh, we watched the Louis L'Amour Western tonight. It was Conagher. It had Sam Elliott in it. Uh, that was, it was Okay. Obviously, any John Wayne movie, McClintock. If you've never seen McClintock, go watch McClintock. It is how a man should live his life. You know, The Patriot was awesome. Uh, McClintock is a John Wayne movie. is really good. Uh, another John Wayne movie. When We Were Soldiers. Oh, thank you, Adam. Oh, man, that movie. That got to me. I loved that movie. That's probably my favorite Mel Gibson movie. As good as The Patriot is, We Were, we were Soldiers was excellent uh i mean and, and not even just the subject matter actually i named my one of my daughters is named after the actress who played in that movie and, and i named her for that actress because i i literally cried i own i haven't seen kingdom of heaven 
I only cry at Mel Gibson movies. I cried at The Patriot uh, when that little girl, uh, when The Patriot came out, I just got recalled after September 11th to, to go back in the, in the Marine Corps. And I'd actually cut my hair. I, I mean, and I had this little blonde daughter and uh, I was about to leave to go to what I thought was war. It ended up being nothing. But uh, And then that little girl runs after Mel Gibson saying, don't go, Daddy, don't go. Please stay. I'll say anything. Are you a freaking weatherman? That was awesome. Uh, you know, I just, just killed me. I just... <laughs> and then we were soldiers when the, uh, the colonel's wife was having to go deliver the telegrams to the other wives of the dead soldiers. That got me waterworks and then of course the passion of the christ if you know you can't get watery eyed at that then there's something wrong uh those are the three movies i've cried at all three of them are mel gibson movies i don't know what that means but <laughs> i'm gonna try not to read too far into it uh <laughs> so i love me some mel gibson movies uh oh the magnificent seven i love the magnificent seven uh it's an old western i'm sure you've seen it it's got uh the old brenner uh it's got a lot of elite i think uh, I know Yul Brenner and uh, Steve McQueen are in it. I think, is Lee Marvin in it? Maybe not. Uh, Charles Bronson is in it. Dean, it was good to see you, brother. Thank you. Uh, anyway, it was a, a Western based off of an old Japanese movie called, uh, I think, The Seven Ronin. Yeah, I saw that too, Billy. <laughs> yeah, that, that our pets are, are bad for the environment. Okay, yeah, not Lee Marvin. Uh, but there was, there was a bunch of sort of more well-named, I know Charles Bronson, Yul Brenner, Steve McQueen, uh, good night, Butch. I didn't see Outlander. And the seven is excellent, Billy. Oh, uh, The Great Escape. I love The Great Escape. It's a World War II movie. It has a little bit of a basis in truth. Uh, Steve McQueen is in that one too. Oh, wow, that's interesting, Ryan. Uh, but uh, The Great Escape is really good. Uh, it was a British movie. So, you know, it wasn't... And that's fine. I mean, it was a Seven Samurai. Yeah, you're right. Uh, so it was told a little bit more from the British perspective. But, that, I mean, that's fine. It was their story. They have some Americans in there just so it would sell in America. And Steve McQueen has a great scene on a motorcycle. How they worked a motorcycle into a Nazi prisoner of war camp... Uh, you know, but they did, and it was a great scene. Uh, what else? Uh, anything with the Marx Brothers in it? Oh, the 13th Warrior is really good, Robert. I did like that one. I was so mad when they chopped that one warrior's head off. I'm like, are you crazy? The one thing in the world you need right now is men to fight, and you're going to chop your biggest dude's head off? Uh, going to... I was so mad. Anyway, what else? Uh, yeah, anything with the Marx Brothers is hysterical. Oh, have you, if you've ever seen the... Uh, yeah, Steve McQueen was great. Uh, they're called The Road Pictures, so it's... Uh, I like old movies. I mean, I like newer movies too, obviously, but... Uh, so it's... Uh, Bing Crosby and uh, Bob Hope. And they do these series of movies with the same characters and they're, you know, they're off on the road. They have the same song they sing and everything. They're off on the road to Morocco. And, uh, and oh, and Dorothy Lamore is always, it's, yeah, it's Bing Crosby, Bob Hope, and Doth Dorothy Lamore. And they're just, they're just goofy, funny movies. I have never seen a Woody Allen movie, Unicorn. I could put that up there with coffee. Never seen it, never will. Uh, so I love the road pictures. Oh, Ben-Hur is really good. Oh, yeah, Jeremiah Johnson was good, Adam. I like that one. That Indian chick was hot. I mean, it was a good movie, but... I did not know that, Billy. That's interesting. That's good to know. <sighs> what other movies do I like? Oh, Bill and Ted are great. Both, both... Bill, the, the last Bill and Ted was not good, except it did have Bill and Ted in it. Yeah, Jim Caviezel is good, Robert. But I like the first two Bill and Ted's. Oh, I love the Lethal Weapon movies. Obviously, Die Hard. Why are you hating on Redford? Uh, what else? Oh, uh, 
Thunderbolt and Lightfoot. It's a stupid, stupid, stupid movie, but very enjoyable. It's got a... Oh, Flags of Our Fathers was really good. It was a good... I've read the book, and now they've they found out now... You know, if you, the, the, the Flag of Our Fathers was book was written by this guy who found out, after his father died, he found out Lonesome Dove. I've never seen Lonesome Dove, Billy, but I always meant to watch it. After his father dies, he finds out that his father had been one of the men in the famous flag-raising picture on Iwo Jima. Uh, and so he, he goes on sort of the, he never knew, his dad never talked about it and wouldn't allow anyone to talk about it. Well, we find out years later why... It's because he wasn't really in the picture. The Marine Corps just said, hey, you were in that picture. Oh, Quigley Down Under is a really good one, uh, Jimmy. They, they needed someone to go on a, a war bond tour, and they just said, hey, you, you were there. You say you were there, go on the war bond tour. And he went on the war bond tour and sold a bunch of war bonds, but it wasn't him in the picture, and so he didn't talk about it and never claimed to be in it. But, but when his son wrote the book, he didn't know that. And so he wrote this book about discovering this about his father, and and uh, Clint Eastwood made a movie about it, a really good movie about it. Uh, and then years later, it comes out that you know he he wasn't in the picture; for, it wasn't him. He was at he was at Iwo Jima. He was in the fight. The man had nothing to be ashamed of. He never really claimed to be in the picture. They just said, you know, go anyway. The, the, but the movie was really good. And, and even without the, the kind of disappointing ending to the story, it was still a good movie. Ah, what other movies are good? No, nah, there's a bunch of them. Rush Hour. <laughs> Rush Hour. Uh, Cowboy Way. I have not seen Cowboy Way. Oh, oh, Harley Davidson and the Marlboro Man was a lot of fun, though. I did like that movie. Uh, Judge Dredd. I liked both Judge Dredd's, both the Sylvester Stallone version and then that other version that came. The other version came out was was better, but the first Judge Dredd was very good. Uh, the first two Matrix were pretty good too. The third one was just off in left field somewhere. But that was the same way with the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. The first two were pretty good, and then the third one just went weird. All of the rush hours were good. I didn't see The Revenant. Uh, I saw the Manchurian Candidate remake, and it was okay. Probably not as good as the first one. Mars Attacks was fun. The Passion of the Christ we talked about earlier, that was very good. I haven't seen Monty Wash. I haven't seen The Departed. Oh, Signs. Uh, the M. Night Shyamalan... That was a Mel Gibson movie, too. I love, I love Mel Gibson. Uh, but Signs was a really good movie. I didn't see Wag the Dog. I didn't see Walsh. I liked the Firefly series a lot. The movie they made was Serenity, and it was okay if you liked the series. Anything with Marilyn Monroe. Adam, I love uh, Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, but for me, uh, 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 Julie Russell was the was the attraction there. I just liked her a lot more than Marilyn Monroe. Uh, Braveheart was very good. Oh, I like everything Tom Selleck's and Jimmy. I just haven't seen that one. Uh, but Gentlemen Prefer Blondes was a lot of fun. Uh, Jane Russell. Thank you, Adam. I'm sorry. I, don't know, I, I knew I wasn't saying it right. Uh, I love Jane Russell. Uh, but I like tall women, so... Yeah, I know. It was a little bit of a, a, a crazy, <laughs> but it was a really good movie. It was well executed. I really enjoyed the movie. Uh, How to Marry a Millionaire was another good Marilyn Monroe, Adam. And then she did one with, was it John Wayne or Jimmy Stewart? She did a Western that was supposed to be really good, but I didn't see it. Uh, oh, but some, the, the best Marilyn, the best Marilyn Monroe movie was Some Like It Hot. Where if you want, like, Classic Marilyn Monroe, uh, River Wild, that's right. But if you just want classic Marilyn Monroe, it's Some Like It Hot. Uh, and it was pretty funny. Except there's two cross-dressing dudes in there, but they didn't have, they were hide, hiding from the mob. Yeah, I think you'll like it if you like Marilyn Monroe. 
that's there's one of her classic dresses is in there and you're kind of like they let that on the movies in the 50s what yeah howard hughes loved jane russell uh but how could you not uh i used to love uh oh i i do like all of the you know i like my little ballroom dancing a little bit so i love the old uh Fred Astaire, and it's late, and my mind is not working well. Fred Astaire and uh, Ginger Rogers movies. Uh, yeah, she is easy on the eyes. Uh, but then I discovered Eleanor Powell. And if you've never seen Eleanor Powell dance, and, and she, she has a few movies where she's with Fred Astaire, she is unbelievable. Ginger Rogers is beautiful. She's grateful. She's a wonderful dancer. Eleanor Powell makes Ginger Rogers look like a cow, at least when she's dancing. Uh, I mean, Ginger's, you know, she's really skinny and short and cute and got a great personality, and she's a better actress than Eleanor Powell ever was. But my God, Eleanor Powell, Fred Stair can barely keep up with her. I just love watching her dance. So anything with Eleanor Powell in it. Uh, but uh, the Fred Astaire, Ginger Roger movies, and Top Hat's really good. Uh, follow the fleets really good. Uh, uh, putting on the Ritz. I'm not going to remember all of them. Uh, the Cowboys. Yeah, John Wayne, that was excellent. Anything with John Wayne is good. Oh, uh, what's the one he did with a uh, stagecoach? I don't know Gloria Graham. I have to look her up. Stagecoach was a really good John Wayne movie. I do, I do like the old musicals a lot, too. Uh, so, uh, my favorite is the, oh, Kiss Me Kate. The Shootist was good. Uh, Kiss Me Kate's a lot of fun. Uh, I do like almost all of the old musicals. Oh, uh, Seven Brides for Seven. All right, look. If you're, I don't care if you don't paint your wagon red was, was pretty good. I don't care if you don't like musicals. If you're a man, you should watch Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. It's a man's movie. There's some singing. There's some dancing. It is a movie about men who are men. And it is a great movie. You should definitely watch Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. It's an old movie. There's some songs you might have to fast forward through. There's a great fight scene. One of the great fight scenes in all of cinema is in Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. Uh... What's another movie with some great fight scenes? Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory has some great fight scenes with the Oompa Loompas. The Four Feathers was very good, Robert. I liked that one. Uh, and there's a, along the same lines of the Four, four Feathers, there's been like, uh, True Grit is really good. I, I'll tell you this though, I liked the new True Grit more than I liked the original True Grit. Uh, if you liked Four Feathers, there's a bunch of Beau Geste movies, because it's a great story. Uh, John, I haven't seen the John Wicks yet. Uh, so if you liked Four Feathers, you'd like the better Beau Geste movies, but there's so many of them, you got to wait through them. Oh, I like the 70s. Uh, I had, oh, yeah, I've always heard that was the best fight scene in all the movies, but I've never seen Rob Roy. Uh, the, uh, the 70s uh, Three Musketeers with Michael Caine. That's a lot of fun. Uh, what else? Anchors Away is a fun one. That's another musical. A lot of a lot of Clint Eastwood's movies are really good. I haven't seen El Camino yet. Uh, I loved up until the end. Michael York, thank you. I'm sorry, Unicorn. You're right. Uh, Michael Caine is the other British guy. Uh, right up until the end, I thought No Country for Old Men might have been one of the greatest movies of all time. But then the ending was so bizarre and stupid and useless, it ruined the whole movie for me. But, but most of No Country for Old Men was really, really good. Uh, there Will Be Blood was like that for me, too. It was a great movie, but when it was over, you were like, what the hell did this happen? That was so stupid. But while I was watching it, I was thinking, man, this is brilliant. This is great. And then it was over, and I was like, what the hell? There's like bowling alley and a fake preacher, and 
There's only, yeah, there's only two. No, there's more than two because uh, Liv Lawrence Olivier was British. So I guess there's three. Hunt for Red October is excellent. Uh, Patriot Games was really good. And I know I don't remember Clear and Present Danger, but Hunt for Red October was a great movie. Uh, I, yeah, that was a wonderful movie. Oh, Air Force One was a good movie too. Get off my plane. All the die did I, I probably said die hard all the diehards uh I liked all of the uh uh right uh Indiana Jones movies except for Temple of Doom. I did not like the crystal skulls at first, but when I watched it again, I liked it a little better it It was okay the ants the ants were a little weird uh the commies were fun though. <laughs> The aliens were a little weird. The refrigerator, the nuclear blast in the refrigerator was a bit much. Uh, I did like, uh, oh, I've seen some Hitchcock movies. I really liked Vertigo. What other Hitchcock movie did I see? Uh, I, I know I've seen at least one other. Uh, yeah, Temple of Doom, I just didn't like. It was like the whole thing was just petty, you know, it was... I don't know. It, it didn't have any... I, I just didn't like Temple of Doom. Lord of the Rings was very, very good. Uh, the Hobbit could have been better. I had high hopes for the... Uh, I had high hopes for The Hobbit, and it, they, they pretty much turned it into a chase movie, and that's not what the story was. But that's, that's a really hard story to put on the, uh, in a movie because it's such a slow-paced thing. And it's supposed to be slow paced, you know? You're supposed to be on the journey with them. Uh, so, uh, it wasn't bad. I, I just had higher. You know, and the thing is, is that I was ready to be disappointed by the Lord of the Rings trilogy. And it was great. They did wonderful. It was fantastic. And so my, my hopes got up for The Hobbit. Uh, and The Hobbit was probably fine, but it didn't live up to the, to the expectations I had from the Lord of the Rings. You know, I haven't seen that one, but <laughs> a silly movie, and I don't remember the name of it, but it was this mob movie where uh, Steve, uh, the jerk, I can't remember his last name. How is this escaping me? You know who I'm talking about. Uh, Harrison Ford lives six minutes from Billy. That's pretty cool. Steve Martin. Thank you, <laughs> Truth Thelen. He, he's hiding from the mob, and they, they put him in the uh, uh, witness protection program in this little town. And he's like this fast-talking, you know, mob. Hey, forget about it. And, uh, oh, Adam's out. Ooh, he's got to get up in three hours. I'm sorry, Adam. But he just ends up taking over this town and, you know, scamming everybody. My Blue Heaven, that was it. I loved that movie. That was a great movie. Uh that was just a lot of fun uh, with, uh, I think, uh, Rick, uh, Moranis was in it. I don't know what Clarissa is, um, but yeah, Rick Moranis and Steve Martin in my blue heaven. That was great. You know what I, it was an awful movie that I really liked. And I like a bad movie that can be honest with itself. It's a bad movie. Galaxy quest with, uh, Matt LeBlanc. I'll terrible and I loved every minute of it yeah <laughs> I've heard that one before Robert uh, what's our what are other bad movies that I really liked I like a lot of bad movies uh, I did not like Howard the Duck oh Callista Flockhart Shaol in soccer was pitiful I didn't watch it but I've seen the I've almost watched it a couple times. Uh, yeah, dude, Galaxy Quest was uh, Galaxy Quest was wonderful. Oh, I'm sorry. I meant uh, I really liked Galaxy Quest too with Tim uh, Tim Allen, but what I meant to say was Lost in Space with Matt LeBlanc. Terrible movie, but I loved it. I thought Galaxy Quest was a really good movie. I I actually really liked Galaxy Quest. Kindergarten Cop. That was another one. Bad movie. Oh, okay. 
a movie that did really poorly that I really liked uh, was called Oscar. Yeah, Message from Space. Uh, and, and, uh, and Sylvester Stallone, you know, I don't know if he directed it and produced it and all this. This little tiny mobster movie, you know, it was completely out of character for uh, Sylvester Stallone. But it was really entertaining. It was fun. It was cute. It was well done. Uh, it, you know, it wasn't, you know, uh, a lot of movies that actors do themselves are kind of, you know, they're, it didn't take itself too seriously. Big Trouble in Little China was excellent. Uh, and Escape from New York was really good. And Escape from L.A. was atrocious. All right, we're losing Jimmy, too. Maybe, maybe I just need to call it a night. Uh, I'm losing all my heavy hitters here. All right, man, we appreciate you. Oh, Roadhouse. I loved Roadhouse. You're going to keep me going. Uh, Roadhouse was great. Uh, there was another Patrick Swayze movie that was really good. Oh, I really like baseball movies, too. It's hard to make a bad baseball movie. Even, uh... Oh, you know what I really liked that no one liked? is The Postman with Kevin Costner in it. I thought that was a great movie. I, and, oh, and I liked Waterworld, too. Uh, I haven't seen it, Unicorn, but I've heard about it. I do need to watch that because I love Jackie Chan. I get to see Jackie Chan do something I didn't love. Uh, but, but Kevin Costner, Waterworld, and The Postman, they both ended his career, and I thought they were both excellent movies. I really liked them. Uh, Green Mile was excellent. Okay. All right, man. We appreciate you all. Uh, I've enjoyed talking to you. I promise we will we will do this again. Taming of the Shrew. Yeah, the Taming of the Shrew was Mariah and I's first date. We went to uh, the Sh the uh, Shakespeare Tavern down in Atlanta, and saw Taming of the Shrew. That was our first date. Uh, I knew pretty quick that I was uh, hooked. Thank you, Aiden. Here we appreciate you, sir. We will do this again. It won't be a year or however long it's been since the last one. I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, thank you, Unicorn. Uh, you guys have a good evening.